get him on good matchups with their offensive line. Their, Watterson's offensive line is not the same girth that Moeller's offensive line. There's no two ways about it. You know, Moeller was much bigger, stronger, and Daniel had a great week. Now we want to get pressure on their quarterback right away because he's a really accurate passer and a really good player. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, what did you think about the play of your young Peyton Underwood, your sophomore quarterback last week running your offense? I thought he was pretty good. Obviously, a uh, couple key mistakes there towards the end of the game. I don't know that we finished it as well as we started. But, I mean, he's a 10th grader. He's 15 years old. There's going to be some of that that's going to going to come through the year. And you have to understand that, and you have to help the growth process. I mean, we will never, ever lean on – you know, we're never going to be young or anything like that. But there is a growth process – for our young guys that are out there, you know, Peyton Underwood, Dylan Newsom, obviously played a ton for us. Um, Isaac Asadu on the defensive line, play, Keelan Smith on the defensive line. I mean, these are guys that are going to be great, great football players, but they need reps and they need them up front with uh, against against frontline players. And you mentioned last week that he does have a good arm. And although in many cases you'll try to control the game with the ground game that you have and the great uh, – running backs that you have because you can run three or four guys out there I understand but one of the things I was impressed by it was a pass it was late in the game it was in the fourth quarter it wasn't a completed pass but uh you could also make the argument that uh, your receiver got held up a little bit on his way to the end zone but uh the fact of the matter is saw him go over top a little bit there and got just a little flash of that arm that he has yeah he's really accurate too and really accurate and that's that's a that's a They also have a uh, running back in Cam Nicholson. He had a couple of touchdowns last week. Uh, how important is he to their offense? How important is it going to be to your defense to key on him and keep him from being a big factor? Well, you know, they've got really good receivers who are all returners, you know, 23, 27, uh, 5. These are 81. These are good football players that we've tried to do a good job of being physical with and being able to play ball in the air, being able to have tight coverage on them. Now the, their quarterback does a great job of putting it in tight windows, but we've got to do the best job we can covering those guys so we can let the front guys get pressure and stop the run. This Nicholson has added a whole new dimension to them. And um, it's interesting. I don't know what, wh how they're coaching or what they're coaching them to do, but he bounces a lot of plays out and some he makes and makes people pay. Now listen, some he doesn't, but the couple he makes people pay, we've got to be weary of that. And uh, we've got to do a great job of getting penetration. Like uh, if we're going to win this football game, it's going to be on the line play. We've got to do a great job against their offensive and defensive lines. If we don't, then we're going to be back to the drawing board. You mentioned their receivers, and you know, last week I thought there there was the one exception where uh, the Dunlop guy got he got uh, free, untouched, and was able to go down the sideline into the end zone. But overall, what did you think about your passing defense? Uh, what do you have to be better on with that this week? Yeah, the wheel where he came out of the backfield. I mean, that's something we've had problems with the last couple of weeks, and we need to do a better job. And so, obviously, it's something we're coaching, something schematic, because these kids want to do a great job. So we've had to take a look, a great look in the mirror, and because obviously Watterson's going to throw Nicholson out of the backfield. I mean, that was what they did with uh, the tailback they had last year, and they'll try to do the same thing. And I would too. Obviously, we we haven't shown we've been able to cover it. So we're we've worked like heck on it all week, and we're looking forward to seeing what we got. Um, I thought we were, I thought we were, there were some where we were okay. Obviously, little number three, he's a speedster. And he got Trey once and he got Richard once. And those are our fastest kid. Listen, he's a Big Ten player. And I thought we hung in there with him pretty good. But he got a couple of those big ones that were, that were, that were big plays in the football game. And I know that our, our secondary has, has taken it upon him to get a lot better this week. What was the, uh, the mood in practice this week? I mean, how's it been still upbeat? Uh, kids were disappointed Saturday. Kids were disappointed, and uh, it's been really hard Monday and Tuesday. I mean, you know this. You've been around. We've, it's it's not fun, and it's it's just not as much fun. And it's been hard. It's been really physical. Um, it's been really physical, and and that's that's just the way it's been. That, that's the only way we know to get better is we got to grind it to get better. And I don't know how long it's going to take for us to get better, but we're going to get better, and it's going to be a lot of hard work to get there. Every year you talk about CCL play. This year. You can really talk about it because now that's what you're going to do. You're going to play in the league. Uh, do you like the fact that you're going to see Watterson and DeSales 
two times this year. You're going to get to play home and homes with these teams. Well, it'll be interesting the second round to see who makes the corrections, kind of like an NFL NFL schedule where guys, uh, the first game and the second game. Obviously, we're going to have different lineups every game. I mean, you're going to have kids in and out of the lineup all year, all year long. I think for every team, but definitely for us. And I feel great about our depth that we're able to do that. But it's also they're going to be in, compl- in completely different teams when we play three weeks from now. Um, you know, I like it. I think that there's familiarity. I mean, I watch them on watch them on tape, and they're good at doing the same things they were good at doing a year ago. And when they played us, points of emphasis. Um, I think it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's exciting. It's neat. It'll it'll be really interesting to look back in November and see how this all played out. Yeah, I, there's already rivalries in this league, but uh, nothing like two games a year to really boost those rivalries, right? Yeah, home and home, and uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be really, really interesting to see. Listen, Watterson wants to beat us worse than anything. We beat them, you know, we, we've played well against them, and they want to, uh, they want nothing more. I've heard about it all year long, and uh, that, that they want nothing more than to beat us, and uh, we're going to get their very best shot. I know they have a great game plan. Um, obviously, with us getting beat last week, they got to feel good and think that they can do a lot of the same things, and we have to prove that we can stop those same things. Well, Brad, thank you very much, and best of luck against the Eagles. All right, thanks, Bobby. That's Hartley Hawks head football coach Brad Birchfield. Coming up next, I'll tell you a little bit about Bishop Watterson as we continue with Hartley Hawks football. Teamwork. It's what makes high school football great. And it's what makes the Kendall team of REMAX Town Center your winning real estate team. Central Ohio is a top-ranked place to live in the nation, and you need to talk to Ron Kendall about the opportunities available now that can put you in a new home. You deserve an upgrade for your family. Let our team help. The Kendall Team of REMAX Town Center. Find us online at kendallteam.com or at 614-325-6295. Gehanna Auto Sales, family-owned and customer-first approach, takes the frustration, runaround, and high-pressure sales out of the car buying experience. Let Gehanna Auto Sales earn your business on your next car purchase. Check out their large selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs at GehannaAutoSales.com or visit Craig and Kyle in person at 180 Mill Street in Gehanna. Gehanna Auto Sales, how the car buying process should be. Welcome back to Jack Ryan Field, a CCL matchup tonight with Bishop Hartley taking on Bishop Watterson. You heard Coach Brad Birchfield talking about the fact that Watterson really wants to beat Hartley. They're really looking for some bragging rights here tonight. Last week, they really wanted to beat the sales, and they were in position to do that, but they couldn't hold on as they lost the game 28-22 to in overtime. And they missed a couple of extra points in that game. Could have been the difference for the Eagles in that one. Uh, Cam Nicholson, the running back, had two touchdowns in that game. You heard Coach Birchfield talking about his importance to that Watterson offense and how the Hartley defense has got to contain him in this game this week. And also... Um, they're a senior team. They're a senior-laden team, so they are a very experienced team, and they'll be looking to use that experience. Uh, the quarterback for Bishop Watterson, Jacob Hoying, is a guy that is uh, – he's been around. He knows his offense very well, and he will be looking to utilize the weapons that they have. We're about to find out what happens in this matchup. It's a CCL battle between Bishop Hartley and Bishop Watterson, and the kickoff is coming your way next. You're listening to Hartley Hawks Football. Bob Boyd Auto Family in Lancaster treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. You have high expectations and specific needs when buying a car. Bob Boyd enjoys the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Bob Boyd Auto to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They have an experienced sales staff eager to share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you. Browse the inventory from anywhere by going to BobBoyd.com. While you're there, schedule a test drive and check out financing options. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. Here, Jack Ryan Field, Bishop Hartley, and Bishop Watterson going head to head in this CCL opener. Bob McGilligan joined this week by Geno Hoffman, who returns to the press box here at Jack Ryan Field. Good to have you back, buddy. It's great to be back. Well, oh, it's uh, it's a great night. It's a lot different from last week, where it was good and then it was really bad. <laughs> and uh, Hartley losing last week to uh, Archbishop Moeller, but they are uh, they're ready for this one. And Geno, as Coach Birchfield said during the pregame show, this is one Watterson really wants because the Hawks have gotten the best of them recently. Yeah, especially last year, uh, it was a lopsided game in Hartley's favor, thirty-nine to nothing game, dominated overall by the offense and the defense dominated. It's going to be interesting this year because a lot of the players that really set the tone for the game last year. They were all seniors, and it's the different this year. It's going to be up to these this year's seniors to take the pillar and get ready. Ryan Hawk with a great kickoff, forcing the Eagles back inside of their own end zone. They're going to, uh, well, that is a touchback. 
So on the uh, kick return, Jack Henry on the touchback. And they will bring the ball out and set it up for Watterson's first drive of the evening. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. This uh, Bishop Watterson team is led by, well, they're led by seniors. They've got a good number of seniors on this team. But uh, the guy that they're going to be looking to is, uh, is their star running back who's going to get the bulk of the carries here tonight. Of course, last week against the sales, he had a, uh, 27 carries for 164 yards, two touchdowns. He really set the tone for really what this game was last year, last week. A tough loss for him, but he definitely did his part, and Harley's definitely going to have to look for him this week. Well, even though they don't go to Cam Nicholson on the first play, Tyler Young, the senior wideout, is who they were looking for. That one falling incomplete, so it is a second down in 10 upcoming. Richard Kenny with a good job there on the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, preventing that pass from being completed. Richard's got good speed. They decided to uh, test the speed on the quarters right away. Yeah, Richard's usually the wide receiver last year. Had a great year last year, and seeing him on the defensive end, he's going to be very pivotal for this Hawks team, especially filling for the loss of George Newer, who was great running, great cornerback for him last year. So it's going to be interesting to see how Richard adapts to it. Jacob Hoying, the senior quarterback, takes a snap. And he hands it off. And going around the left side is Tyler Young. And Young getting near that first down marker. In fact, it's going to depend upon the spot. It looks like they're going to give him 11 on the carry. And it will be first down and 10. Interesting they decided not to go with Nicholson right there. Trying to show the depth of the running back position for Hart Watterson. And getting Hartley on their toes really quick. And uh, going out of the Hartley playbook there. Bringing the, the end right around on the jet sweep. And picking up the first down. They've got Nicholson set up as the running back here. Again, man in motion, and they'll try to go up the middle, and the Hawks are right there, ready for that, waiting for that, and making the tackle was Samuel LeMay. He's a senior, off, uh, senior tackle there, and he got right off the ball and made the stop. And the defense is going to be very pivotal for them this game. Last week, they gave up 34 points against a very big powerhouse in Moeller. Defense was really good for them last year. They only gave up 13 points a game. So it's going to be very uh, pivotal for them to keep this um, game defensively on tone. So they lost two, second down to 12. Hoying's got time. And Daniel Tucson lost his footing, and that allows a pass, which falls incomplete. The intended receiver there, Andrew Bettendorf, senior wideout. And a good job in coverage there, step-by-step. Case on Sutherland. So that is going to bring up a third down and 12 after the incomplete pass. See if this Hawks defense can come up with a big third down stop and force the Eagles to punt. Two wide outs to the right side. Hoying looks left side, and he throws to the far sideline, and that is incomplete into and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And once again, the man they were throwing for was Bettendorf, and it is going to be fourth down. Great defensive possession right there for the Hawks. It took less than a minute for them to get the Eagles punting already. Yeah, Bishop Watterson converting and getting a first down and then uh, losing two yards, and they couldn't get any further up the field. Kenny is back, and uh, he is back there with Trey Saunders. Low snap. Do get it away, and they kick it towards Saunders, and he's going to let it bounce. And that gets a Watterson roll taken at the 28-yard line. Saunders trying to dance out of a tackle. He does. He's up over the 35. Nice cut to get to the 41-yard line. Finally brought down at the 42-yard line. So uh, Trey Saunders showing a couple of moves there. Matthew Heidenreich uh, was able to bring him down, and it'll be first down at 10 for the Hawks. And Saunders, is, along with Richard Kenny, they're going to be a very important duo for the Hawks this year. As sophomores last year, they got a lot of playing time, and they did really well last year. And so this year, as a junior upperclassman, they should be ready to go, and they should be very pivotal for this offense. Up under center, Peyton Underwood, the sophomore quarterback, hands it off. And going over the right side, breaking a tackle over the 45, the 50-yard line, and carrying that football into Watterson territory, Niall Johnson as he is all the way down to the 42-yard line. Nice run for a first down. Expect him to get more carries this, this game. He's been he's going to be a very big, pivotal running back this year, losing a lot of depth at the running back position from last year. He's going to look to fill some very big shoes. So first down and 10. Well, one thing about this Hawks team last week, uh, they were 
taking on a massive defensive line and trying to get their blocks and run the football. They had some success, not the success they're used to having. Is a quick handoff and over the right side goes uh, Hartley and Marcellus Parker taking that football for a couple of yards. Second down and five upcoming here. Ball down to the 38-yard line. Now, Gino, this offense, you know, we talk about uh, Underwood being a, a sophomore quarterback. That doesn't phase Brad Birchfield, the head coach of this team. Here's a quick handoff on a counter move and... Trey Saunders getting across the 35 and down to the 33-yard line, close to the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. But the quarterback in this offense, manage the offense. Make the right calls. Hand the ball off cleanly. And when you're asked to throw the ball, put it on target. Yeah, that's what Miles was like last year in a run-oriented offense. He did a great job over the course of his high school career managing the offense, giving the ball to the, to the running backs, and just doing a great job as being the control of the offense. So it's going to be important for Underwood to take that next step, too. Saunders goes in motion. They're going to hand it off to Johnson. Over the right side, he goes easily for the first down as he is to the 30-yard line. And the Hawks continue to move the sticks. Oh, anyway, and now Johnson, nice running back, 5'10", 200 pounds. He fits the bill for uh, the kind of running backs that get cranked out here year after year. Absolutely. Same with Jalen last year. He wasn't very tall, but he was a very big guy at 200 pounds. Niles the same way. Of course, you got Marcellus Parker in there acting as uh, the lead back, and he can take the quick handoffs as well. They turn and pitch it to Johnson, trying to get to the outside, and he does inside the 25. Great cut, and he gets to the 15-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds. Oh, he had thoughts of making it all the way to the end zone. Didn't quite get there. They'll put the ball at the 16. Again, it's about that blocking for the Hawks. Good job in pulling to the near sideline. As Bishop Hartley is just methodically taking this ball right down the field on their very first possession. Send Johnson in motion. Underwood hands it off to Saunders. Right up the middle he goes, and he is inside the 10-yard line, staying on his feet as long as he possibly could. And again, the Hawks are going to be close to the first down, just a couple of yards short. And as these methodical runs are going to be very important, the big runs last year, they were always methodical. They cut time down the clock, and it's going to be very important for them this game to do the same. It's about a yard and a half is what they'll need to get a first down. Again, if you can get a good run, you can get it all the way into the end zone. Marcellus Parker is the lone man in the backfield. Trey Saunders set up on the right. They're going to send Johnson in motion. They hand it off to Parker, and Parker just driving off the left side. He is inside the five, and there's a late flag that comes in at the end of the play. Face mask is going to be the call against Watterson. So that's going to help out and take it uh, half the distance to the goal. Cole Graney, junior linebacker, is who they uh, call for the face mask penalty. First down and goal from the three-yard line. Now they go with the stacked backfield. Hand it off to Johnson, and he easily dances over the right side into the end zone for the touchdown. Three-yard touchdown run for the Hawks with 7.53 to play here in the first quarter. Classic Hartley drive right there, just pounding the ball in the running game, giving it multiple running backs and Niall and Marcellus and ultimately getting the touchdown. Yeah, and for uh, Peyton Underwood, just what we talked about, manage the offense. Good, clean handoffs. That's what he did. Blockers blocked. The runners ran. And now Ryan Hawk will try to make this a 7 to nothing game as he attempts the extra point from the 10-yard line. Ryan Hawk is ready. Kick is up, and that kick is straight through for the extra point. And it is a 7 to nothing lead for the Hartley Hawks. So, again, that's the way you want to start a football game. Uh, and actually on both sides of the ball, to be honest with you, Gino, they kick the ball off, they allow first down, and then they just stuff the offensive Watterson, get the ball back, pretty much do what they want to all the way down the field. Yeah, they stopped uh, Watterson very well into their, their zone, which allowed for good um, – 
ball position when they got the punt cut punt return and that really set up for the whole offense right there getting those long those runs and ultimately just wearing out the Watterson defense already well again last week was disappointing for the Hawks because they're playing a, a marquee opponent and they you know they came into that figure and they had a chance to win that game and they were playing well and they had the lead and then it got away from them but there were so many lessons in a game like that that they can take into this game. And I think you saw some of those in that very first drive. Yeah, and I think in the first game, too, you know, given everything that's happened over the summer, the first game is going to be a little bit messy, and that's what it was like last week. But I thought they played as well as they could, and I think this week is like where they're really going to hit their stride. And now for Bishop Watterson, their chance to see if they can respond to this and see if they can come back and get themselves back in this game down by a touchdown. Ryan Hawk ready to kick it away. First time he kicked it into the end zone. The second time he is going to bounce it at the goal line. And this time, Watterson will have a chance for a return. Up the near sideline, taking a hit, stumbling across the 25. And shy of the 30-yard line is Jack Henry. So Henry got that ball pretty much right on the goal line, just outside the goal line, and had a nice return to get it up over the 25. They're going to place this at the 28-yard line, first down and 10. Oh, nice job there. Could have let that ball go right through the end zone, started at the 20. I think that's that aggressiveness that, you know, Watterson's trying to show right here. They're not going to sit back. They're not, they don't want the game to be dictated to them. They want to try to, you know, they want to control it. They want to uh, have some say in what's going on here. Tyler Young, the wide out to the left. And here's the pitch. And trying to get some running room is Nicholson. And there is no running room for him. He is brought down. Behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two. Hartley defense right there did a great job of going after Nicholson, giving a loss of yards, and you could already tell that this defense is dialed in and ready to go. Well, Cam Nicholson last week had a couple of running touchdowns, had a very good week, and, you know, uh, the Hawks, they know he's going to be a key to this game for Watterson, who now goes with a five receiver set. And we get a whistle and a flag. And there was a false start by the offense. And that will be a help to the Hawks. You know, it's funny, Gino, just watching the early part of this game. Nicholson's gotten the ball twice. Both times the defense has been right on him. It's obvious they're going to spy on him all game. They are ready for him. They're expecting him to take the football. For Watterson, if they're going to have success, they have to start completing some passes. Yeah, it's going to be up to Hoying, the senior running back, who last year did um, – Defense did a good job against Hartley did. And it's going to be important like this right there with a complete pass to keep doing that. And that was Nicholson who just came uh, out of the slot position to make that reception and get back close to the original line of scrimmage. They'll put it right at the original line of scrimmage, as a matter of fact. And that'll bring up a third down and ten. And that's another thing that uh, the Hawks knew going into this game. Nicholson's going to be a dual threat. He's going to get the ball on the handoff. He's also going to take passes out of the backfield. And that was something they struggled with covering Moeller last week was the pass out of the backfield. Third down at 10. Here's a pass. And this one is going to fall incomplete. The intended receiver was Brandon Trout, sophomore wide out. Sean Saunders was in the coverage for the Hartley Hawks. And again, another good job by the defense, a quick way of getting the Watterson, giving them the ball back, and puts them in another great position where they have to punt from their own 35-yard line or 25-yard line. And they had the ball for <laughs> not very long, about a minute and a half, quite honestly. Here's the punt. High, and Richard Kenny makes a fair catch call. Good job to pull that one in. The way he was backpedaling to get it at the 37-yard line and be able to – Hang on to the football. That's nice. That, that You know, that's obviously it's talent, but that just shows you the, the great balance that he has and the great hands that he has. Yeah, and that goes unnoticed right there. Um, great balance, great agility, great hand-eye coordination to make sure you catch the ball and make sure you just corral it in because instead of muffing it. Six minutes and seven seconds remains here in the first quarter. Hawks with a 7 to nothing lead. Scored on their first possession. Get the football back now. In their own territory. First down and 10. Send Saunders in motion and then pitch it to Kenny. Coming around and that was not fooling Bishop Watterson. No way. Richard Kenny gets uh, dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And 
And I believe that was Jack Henry that came up and made that tackle from the defensive back position, just uh, staying with Kenny right around behind the quarterback and taking the handoff. He did get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. This time on the counter, come near side to Saunders, and he was looking upfield. He was ready to go a long way, and all of a sudden, there was nowhere to go. Good job by the Watterson defense, only giving up two yards so far, and these two characters are a third and eight for him. This is what they need to make sure they stay in the game. Chris Sauter, the defensive lineman, getting up there and making that tackle after just a two-yard gain. Third down and eight. First big test for the Hawks offensively in this game. Underwood goes into the shotgun for the first time. And he will throw near sideline. Saunders tried to make the adjustment, and he could not. It falls incomplete in coverage was Henry Blevins, and Bishop Hartley will have to punt it away. Great defensive possession right there for Watterson. They needed that right there. They couldn't give up another Hartley score, forcing them to do the passing game, getting away from their bread and butter, and ultimately they succeeded in that. Ryan Hawk is going to punt for the first time. Hawk will kick it away from about his own 30-yard line, which he does. It's a good kick. Tyler Young waits for it to come down and makes the fair catch at the 19-yard line. Good decision as the coverage team was doing its job for Hartley. And once again, Watterson will see if they can get their offense going. The defense gives the offense a chance to get back on the field here and make something positive happen. Uh, for Bishop Hartley, you don't see many drives like that, and that was just good defense all around. You said it, uh, you know, Trey Saunders was looking to break a big run. All of a sudden, it wasn't there. That was the case of the old close but no cigar. Five receivers set again here for Watterson. Jacob Hoying has the ball, and he throws down the left sideline, and that is caught. The receiver is knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And that's crucial for Watterson right there. They can get Hoying going, completing passes, because last week he only threw for 93 yards. If he can start connecting at a high high clip, it's going to be very hard for the Hartley defense to contain that. Andrew Bettendorf on the catch. Kason Sunderland was in coverage. Nice pass completion. Hoying drops back again. He's got time over the middle. He has a man, and Niall Johnson does a great job of breaking that up. Incomplete pass. Second down and 10. Niall already had a touchdown this game on the offensive board, and already on the defensive side, he's making a difference already, which is very crucial because Hartley has a lot of two-way players. If they can get these players to keep going, it's going to be very hard for Watterson. Target was Davis Boone, the senior tight end, who stands six foot three. And Johnson at 5'10", able to leave his feet, get up there and bat that pass down with one hand. Second down and 10. Well, they bring Nicholson back into a running position here. Take the snap. They're going to go on the uh, jet sweep to the near sideline. And at the 39-yard line, Marcellus Parker steps up to meet the ball carrier, Tyler Young. Good tackle right there by Marcellus. He's going to be very pivotal on this defensive end as well. With his size, he should pose as a very big threat, especially since Sumo Kessley is not playing in this game. Yeah, that's a very good point. Sumo Kessley is out with an injury this week. And he is a key on this defense. One of those situations where, you know, it's early in the season. It's only the second game. No need to play through something early on. If you could take a week off and... Maybe get yourself feeling better for week three as we get a whistle here and a timeout is called by the Hartley Hawks, or excuse me, by Bishop Watterson. 3.54 is what uh, remains here in the first quarter, and Hartley leads Watterson by the score of 7 to nothing. You are listening to Hartley Hawks football. The Central Ohio Spina Bifida Alliance is a nonprofit organization that provides services such as annual fundraisers, helping with medical expenses, 
vehicle modifications, and much more. This year, they are hosting a virtual 5K, which allows you to do it on your own time, wherever and however you want to. The event is October 2nd through 4th, and 100% of the proceeds will go to the organization, which is completely run by volunteers. Visit scoreonair.com and click the link at the top of the page to register. The deadline is September 27th, and everyone who signs up receives a shirt and a goodie bag. Cosmo 5K. Catch us if you can. So Watterson taking the time out there first of the half. They are trailing by the score of seven to nothing. That will work from the near hash mark here. On the third down and five. Interested to see if uh, Cam Nicholson takes his ball on a quick handoff or if they put it back in the air. The officials finally blow the whistle and tell the teams they can get back to playing. And Hoing rolls out to his left, and he puts the ball in the air down the field, and that is incomplete. There's a late flag that comes in. The intended receiver was Tyler Young. Richard Kenny was in coverage. Kenny getting called for pass interference. And so that is a first down, and that is an unforced error by the Hawks' defense. Yeah, and penalties are always a killer for Hartley, especially on the pass interference, because they always don't really deal with the passing game that much. It's, in high school football, is usually the running game. So when it's always passing, there's always those pass interference plays, and that really hurt them right there. Well, again, Watterson, they're finding some success putting the ball in the air. And Nicholson, for the most part, is uh, not really a part of what's going on, although that might change here as they line up in an I formation. Hoying takes it, and he hands it off, and Nicholson stays on his feet briefly. But he is brought down, Daniel Tucson right there in the middle of things after what is just a one-yard gain. Daniel Tucson is a guy, third-year starter as a junior. He's going to be very important for this defense as well. With his size, his frame, he's going to fill in some shoes for Deion Drake and those guys who had the defensive line last year. Second down and nine. Three receivers set here for Watterson. And Hoying rolls toward the near sideline. Lost his footing, and he gets it back, but he wisely holds on to the football. He gets himself back to the line of scrimmage. That's a senior quarterback right there, Gino. Starts to slip. He could have moved, pulled up, tried to throw a pass. He just tried to tuck it away and get whatever positive yardage he could. Yeah, good job by Hoying, trying to make the best out of a play that really seemed like it was going to be a loss. And trying to get as much positive yards as possible, or at least getting back to the line of scrimmage. So he did pick up one. It'll be third down and eight. Interesting to see if this is two-down territory for Watterson if they don't convert here on third down. Two receivers to either side. Nicholson, the running back. Hoying, rolling left, looking, throwing, and hits his man, and that's going to be good for a first down. Bringing it in is Andrew Bettendorf. Finally taken out of bounds by Kaysan Sunderland. And again, Watterson showing some different looks here to get the quarterback on the move. That's not an easy throw to make when you're running toward the far sideline and making that throw. He made it look easy. Yeah, and Hoying's done a nice job already with his second uh, pass for a first down being complete. If he can just keep going, Hart Watterson's going to be in pretty good shape for the game. Jacob Hoying, senior running the show pretty well right now for Watterson. First time they've had sustained success on offense. And here's Nicholson, takes it, finds a hole up the middle, and he's got himself a first down as he isn't brought down until he gets inside the 20 and all the way down to about the 17-yard line. And Nicholson showing what he did last week, just doing a great job running the football on each carry. And now it looks like the Hawks are going to take a timeout with two minutes and 13 seconds remaining here in the first half. Brad Birchfield wants to make sure that his team is on the same page and on the right page here. So with a timeout on the field, we'll take a quick timeout. You're listening to Hartley Hawks Football. Bob Boyd Auto Family in Lancaster treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. You have high expectations and specific needs when buying a car. 
Bob Boyd enjoys the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Bob Boyd Auto to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They have an experienced sales staff eager to share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you. Browse the inventory from anywhere by going to BobBoyd.com. While you're there, schedule a test drive and check out financing options. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. Now Bishop Watterson on the move. First down and 10. They trail 7 to nothing, but they are a legitimate threat right now inside the 20-yard line down at the 18. Each team is taking a timeout. Jacob Hoying sizing up the defense here, and there is movement. And that's going to be against the defense. Just misreading the snap count there was Samuel LeMay. He's offside. Well, that's one of the things that will drive you crazy as a coach. You just take a timeout. You want to make sure that everything's good and set. And the first thing that happens is you make a mental error. Yeah, now if you're Watterson, this is something that you have to capitalize on. An error being first and five, and you're almost to the first and goal. So you got to get five yards over there. It's going to be very important for them to capitalize. Nicholson in the backfield with Hoying. Hoying rolling to the near side, looks toward the end zone. Now glance back across the field, nowhere to go, and finally throws toward the corner, and that one is incomplete. Off the hands of one of the Eagles in the end zone. That was good coverage by the Hawks. As Hoying looked at about three different things there and couldn't find any of them that would work. Yeah, it was a good job by Hoying, reading, scrambling, getting out of the pocket and looking. It was a good look. It was just a very tough pass to complete, and it was a good effort, though. So it is second down and five. Again, those plays, good plays. First down and five. You've got, you're going to go uh, four downs here to convert, so... You've got plenty of time, plenty of opportunities. Here's a pitch and going over the left side and getting near the first down marker, Tyler Young. In fact, where they placed the ball, he's got the first down, and Watterson is looking at first down and goal for the first time this evening. Good job by Watterson right there, getting that first down, chipping away now at the running game. I expect Cam Nicholson on this drive right here to be a very pivotal part. I don't expect him to really pass with being in first and goal. So Cam Nicholson should be a very pivotal role in this. Yeah, great point. Uh, not a lot of field down there. So if you want to set up and make a pass, you don't have all the time in the world, a lot less room to deal with. And Nicholson would seem to be the guy that they're going to go to in this situation. Let's find out if that's the case or not. Of course, they've already brought uh, Tyler Young a couple of times on that jet sweep. And there's just so much confusion here that uh, Watterson is going to have to take another timeout. So they, uh, they've they taken two now. The first quarter isn't even over, but that tells you how important this drive is to them. If they come away from this with uh, no points or even three points from where the ball is sitting right now, the first down and goal, that would uh, that would be a, a blow to, uh, you know, your psyche, really. Yeah, I think what Watterson's really, their mindset right here is just they want to make this a whole new ball game. 7-7. Seven to seven. They don't want to be down by 7 in the fourth, starting the second, especially given the fact in the second quarter, Hartley really usually finds their stride in even in the second half. So this is a very, very important play for Watterson. So, yeah, they were all over the place. There were guys that would line up, and then they were shifting positions, and they just needed to talk about it. Now let's see if that talk produces dividends here. As they continue to have a quick huddle over near the sideline, before coming back up to the line of scrimmage. Ball is on the seven, first down and goal. Cam Nicholson in the backfield as there are uh, running backs flanking the quarterback on either side. Hoing does want to throw, and he does throw, and that one is incomplete. Richard Kenny was uh, the defender there. They picked on him earlier and got a pass interference call. And they were throwing his direction again. And again, the intended receiver was Tyler Young. So we talked all about Cam Nicholson and how involved he might be here. And It has been uh, Tyler Young that's been, in many ways, a go-to guy early on here for Watterson. Yeah, it's surprising that they decided to go to the pass right there on second and seven, that close to the goal. Um, 
I expect Cam Nicholson to be important right here, but we'll see what happens. Baby Waters is trying to keep Harley on their toes. Well, they will give it to Nicholson, and he does go up the middle, and he's going to be dropped at the two-yard line, maybe leaned forward to the one-yard line. Either way, they are on the doorstep here, and it looks like there's an injury. Sean Saunders getting credited with the tackle. And um, that is Nicholson, the running back, who is down. And he is very slow in, in getting back up, being attended to by the trainer. But they uh, he, he wanted to go right to the sidelines, and they, they hold him up there for a moment. Just make sure he's okay before he goes back there. But now, here's your star running back. You're on the one-yard line. And... And he is uh, leaving the game. It's good to see that he's leaving off his own power. So it doesn't look like anything in terms of his legs that he injured right there. It looks like he just got nicked up going down. Well, in the meantime, there was a uh, there was a flag for an illegal substitution by the defense. So it's still second down. They put the ball half the distance to the goal, so it's on the three. Oh, and that'll make it a little bit uh, closer for Watterson here. Just over a minute remaining in the first quarter as the Eagles try to get on the board. And a lot of shifting here. Nobody in the backfield. Hoying takes a snap. Rolling right, throwing, and that is caught. And... That is going to be a touchdown. Leaning forward and getting the ball over the goal line, Sam Intahar, senior wide receiver. All he had to do was break the plane to the goal line, and that's what he did with the nose of the football. And Watterson is in the end zone, and they have a chance to tie the game with an extra point. Great drive by Watterson right there, really headed by Hoying. A first down pass that was really pivotal in the game in this drive and also gained the touchdown pass. He's been really great so far. So, again, they will go for the extra point here. Carson Blank, senior kicker, puts it up and through. And just like that, it is 7-7 with 47.3 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. So, a little bit stunning for Bishop Hartley, Gino, because Watterson, who looked inept in the first couple of possessions, all of a sudden they come down the field and they kind of did what they wanted to. I think I think for that you give more credit to Watterson. I think they're just a way more experienced team than they were a year ago. Boeing's a senior, Nicholson's a senior, so they've been here before. Hartley's a little bit younger in some ways where they lost a lot of senior leadership last year, but obviously they always have leadership every year. But I think it's just more on the credit of Watterson that they're here to play. They're ready to come out and they're ready to get, re to get their hands dirty and play a powerhouse in Hartley. And I will tell you this, if uh, that is going to continue, if Watterson's going to continue to throw the football – it's going to take pressure. They're going to have to get some pressure on the quarterback. And, and I know Hoing's making it difficult, too, because he's rolling out, he's throwing the ball everywhere. But, you know, he's he's able to do that for the most part without any blue jerseys in his face. Yeah, and you wonder that if that's because of Sumo Kesley coming out, because I remember he's usually the guy who always rushes the quarterback, get those huge sacks right there. So you wonder how important of a loss Sumo Kesley is in this game. Well, in any event, these teams uh, – Showing that they have come to play tonight. Opening of league play for Bishop Hartley. Watterson last week played to sales and lost a heartbreaker in overtime. And here's the kick. Trey Saunders takes it, and he stepped into the end zone. And that's almost too bad because he's got terrific speed, and he didn't get a chance to show it right there. Yeah, he's a guy right there who has big returns usually every game. It sucks that he wasn't able to get right there with his foot in the end zone, but Hartley's still 20-yard line, not terrible position. Now Johnson and Marcellus Parker in the backfield for the Hawks. They'll just be looking to put together another one of their methodical drives here. And as Gino said earlier, they do seem to find themselves in the second quarter of games. It's only 47 seconds left in the first quarter of this one. 
Hand it off to Johnson. Up the middle he goes. Nice move to get across the 30 and to the 31-yard line. First down and 10. It looks like their go-to running back for this game is going to be Niall. Richard obviously going to play a big role, but Niall so far he's been a great uh, giving the ball to, and Payton's done a great job handing it to him. Yeah, and that was uh, some nice moves right up the middle there. There wasn't a lot of room. He took advantage of what was there and got the first down. 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Underwood, under center. Hands it off on the sweep. There is a flag on the play. Richard Kenny was dropped back at the 26-yard line. So we just wait for the indication of the penalty. Looks like an illegal shift on the part of the offense. So uh, Watterson deciding that they would decline the penalty. Their head coach, Brian Kennedy, likes where they have Hartley right now. It's second down and 15. Johnson goes in motion. Here's a quick handoff. Trey Saunders breaks out of the original tackle, but he is going to be brought down even further back at the 15-yard line, and that will wind up being the final play of the first quarter. So Hartley headed the wrong direction. As the quarter comes to a close, they did get the first score in this game. But after one quarter of play, it is Bishop Hartley 7 and Bishop Watterson 7. You are listening to Hartley Hawks football. Good evening, good times at C-A-T. Chef Jimmy at the TAT corner of James and Livingston says, come on down. The TAT's delicious Italian-American specialties are so nice and nicer. And the Corovas are going above and beyond to keep their guests and employees safe. Try this dine-in special, pasta dinner for two, with soup, salad, bread, and dessert, just $29.95. Or this carry-out deal, family pasta dinner for four, with salad, pasta, meatballs, and bread for $27.99. Add a bottle of select wine, and you're out the door with a dinner for four for $35.99. With wine, the dining room's open and safe. But if you're not comfortable dining in, call ahead and order TAT curbside carry-out. The TAT at the corner of James and Livingston, 614-236-1392, where the Corova family makes you feel welcome like nobody else. Good evening, good times at TAT. Getting set to start the second quarter. Bishop Hartley and Bishop Watterson tied at seven apiece. Bob McElligot and Geno Hoffman with you from Jack Ryan Field here on the campus of Bishop Hartley High School. And the Hawks, they have lost a ton of yardage. and They have... Lost 15 yards so far here. They're looking at a third down and 25. Well, Peyton Underwood does have a good arm. That is uh, what the coaches have said. He can throw the football. I would imagine we're going to see him throw the football here. Yeah, a third and 25. I expect it right there. I expect Richard Kenny and Trayvon Saunders to be the main targets as well. It's like last year, and we'll see what happens. From the shotgun. Bring a man in motion. Fake the handoff and now throw to the left side. Saunders has it, and Trey is only going to get two yards. And he is wrapped up and pulled down to the ground. Good job on coverage and tackling by Nicholas Uel, senior linebacker. He was not fooled, even with a fake handoff. And Hartley is going to have to punt it away again. And we can see this Watterson team is ready to come out and play for him from the first quarter. They had a terrific first quarter. And this defensive drive right after an offensive drive that came into a touchdown has been tremendous for him. Ryan Hawk back out to punt. Third time he's punted already in this game. And shifts around to his right. Great kick. Fair catch is called for, and the ball is taken at the 35-yard line by Tyler Young. Well, again, when you get into those situations, what you need is your punter to do a good job. Ryan Hawk did just that. Yeah, uh, very deep into their own territory. He just destroyed that ball right there all the way over to the Hart Watterson's territory right there. And um, Great field position, honestly, for the Hartley for making it something out of nothing. That's exactly right. Something out of nothing. And now 
We'll see if Watterson can put together another drive like their previous one. Set up three receivers to the right. Cam Nicholson in the backfield. They will hand it off to him, and Hartley is ready for that. And he will be brought down after just a couple of yards. Good job to step up there and be part of the tackle. Deontay Hubbard, he's a sophomore outside linebacker. Well, they pick up three on that play, second down and seven. Two men in the backfield right now. Surrounding Hoying, who wants to throw. Has time. Deep pass down the far sideline. Incomplete. That was right off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Richard Kenny again was there in coverage. That was a good look right there by Hoying and just missing the outstretched um, arms of the wide receiver right there. Great job by Kenny right there with the coverage as well. Tyler Young again, the man that... They threw the pass in the direction of. Almost had it completed for a big play. Third down and seven. It's a big down for the Hawks defense right here. If they can stop this, they could force a punt. And Hoying has to throw quickly, but he completes it, and it's going to be for a first down across midfield. And still going are the Eagles, and finally... Out of bounds over on the far sideline. Brandon Trout, sophomore, able to pull that in and convert on a big third down play. And we're seeing the passing game for Watterson be very important for him. We thought it was going to be the running game. But overall, the passing game so far has been tremendous for him. Well, take what they give you, right? And uh, the running game, Cam Nicholson, the Hawks have sniffed that out for the most part here. But the passing game, they're struggling with. And so the Eagles will stay with the game in the air. And again, they empty the backfield, bring Nicholson in motion. And Hoying with a quick throw to Nicholson. And a better job on the coverage there. And again, the sophomore Hubbard with the tackle. And he tackles him for a loss of two. That's a big play right there for Hartley, giving it the second and 12. They need to get these tackles for a loss because we can obviously see that Hoying could throw the ball tonight. They can make it farther, then it's going to be very important for him. Yeah, he can throw the football. There's no question about that. And that deep threat is there. They've come so close to converting on it a couple of times. Second down and 12. Tyler Young, wide out to the right side. He's been a busy guy in this game. They pitch it to Nicholson, looking for room up the middle. He finds a little bit, and then he makes some more as he gets all the way down inside the 35. And that's going to bring up a third down and short now. Great run right there by Nicholson, showing that he's still in the game and that he could definitely make a difference, even though it's been the passing game so far for him. Great position by Watterson to convert on third down. Yeah, they uh, got away from the running game just long enough to loosen it up with the passing game and then go right back to the run there. Again, more than likely four down territory here. Deshaun Tucker checks out of the game and Coming in is Anthony Thrivner. And we've got a whistle, and I believe a timeout was called by Watterson before that snap, and that will be their last timeout of the half with 8.37 to go here in the first half. Again, it just shows you how they're looking at this game. If they can score on this drive, they feel pretty good about themselves. They don't want to waste an opportunity here, especially not with the third down and two. Yeah, they definitely are trying to make the best out of everything they have, especially all the advantages. It may hurt them later in this half if they need to use a timeout, but they can't use it because they already used it up with 8.30 to go. But it, you already tell the Hawarsons focus on making the most out of what they have now. Man, with 8.37 to go here, they want to keep this thing moving. and you know, They don't worry about keeping the clock moving the way that uh, Hartley does when Hartley runs the football. If they, if they have to throw it and Keep moving it that way, and then that's that's exactly what Watterson is set to do here tonight. Let's see if Nicholson gets the call here on third down and two. 
They will set him up in the backfield. Along with th uh, three wide receivers to the right. They give it to Nicholson, and the Hawks have that figured out. Bring him down at the 35-yard line. Loss of a couple of yards right there. It's almost like they were thankful to see that. <laughs> you know, they're like, hey, power run situation here. They're going to give it to the running back. Let's just do what we do, right? Yeah, big stop right there for the Hawks. We'll see what the Haw what the Eagles do. If they want to try and go for it or they're going to give it away. Now, well, fourth down and three. Line up to go for it. As you figured that they would. At this point on the field, Nicholson, they fake the handoff and try to throw a quick slant, and that is incomplete. The intended receiver was Davis Boone, and again, Niall Johnson, great coverage. Great job for the Hawks right there, first in the turnovers, which is one thing they did a really good job last week against Moeller, forced five turnovers against the Division One powerhouse and them, and seeing them do it right there. The defense so far has been really good in that. And that's the second big play that Niall Johnson has made defensively defending against the much bigger tight end, Davis Boone. So now the Hawks offense gets a chance to go back at it here and see if they can get themselves going again. Trey Saunders stays on his feet and gets up over the 40-yard line. Looked like when he first got the football, he it looked like he was having problems getting the football, like it almost came out of his hands. So he, he gets control of it, he gets hit right away, and still was able to to push forward for six yards. Yeah, great job getting those yards after contact and making the most out of every carry. So with a second down and four, now Johnson is the deep back here. Underwood will pitch it to him on the near side. And he breaks one tackle and will wind up right near the 45-yard line. There is a flag on the play. It's holding against Hartley. And that run is coming back. That was Marcellus Parker trying to open up the corner there for uh, Johnson to be able to turn and come up the sideline. And he did, but he got caught for a hold. And that's going to hurt Hartley right there. Instead, it would be a, a short for the first down. They're pushed back 10 yards. It's all the way back to the 29-yard line. And they've got to get to the 45. Second down and 16 now. Saunders goes in motion. Fake the handoff to Nile Johnson. They put the ball in the air. Richard Kenny downfield. And Kenny is able to bring it in at the 30-yard line. First down and 10 as Underwood completes a big pass. Tremendous job right there by Kenny. Gout stretching right there. We just saw the big arm of uh, Peyton Underwood right there. That was a really nice pass. But Kenny using all, Kenny using all of his might right there. Stretch out and corral it for the first down. There's Richard Kenny. Had a big 91-yard touchdown run last week. And a big catch right here to set up a first down and 10. They'll hand it off to Niall Johnson. He's going to pound it right up the middle inside the 30. And down to the 26-yard line for four. And you go back to that pass, you know, Richard looked like he was slowing down and then started to speed up. And so I don't know if he thought it was underthrown or if he was trying to bring that defender in and then uh, create a little separation. Either way, it all worked as Johnson gets it again. This time there is no running room through the right side, or very little at that. Now Watterson says that that ball came out and that they have it. So the Eagles quickly run to the sideline. The officials, though, are getting together, and they say it is a turnover. So the Hawks with a fumble, and Watterson with a recovery, and that's a big defensive play for Bishop Watterson as it gets their offense right back on the field. Yeah, that's a huge shift of momentum right there after a great catch by Richard Kenny. Quickly, Watterson comes back and gets the fumble, and it really sucks the life out of Hartley right here. Huge play with six and a half to go here in the first half. Tie game, 7-7. And this Hartley defense again back on the field. Now, a lot of these guys play both ways anyhow, but I've been playing a lot more defense here as of late. Here's a quick throw, and that is complete out to the 30-yard line. And just a, a quick strike to Brandon Trout. Good job in 
tackling there by Kason Sunderland. Still a pickup of eight, second down and two. And again, the passing game for Watterson is connecting today. It's been very impressive to watch right here. Yeah, they uh, – Hoying's got the timing down right now. I know he's missed on a, a couple like that quick slant they tried to throw on fourth down on their last drive. But, you know, for the most part, he's – Kind of got it going on, if you will. And here's a run. And this is going to be good for a first down. As they go over the right side. And Cam Nicholson gets the first. Yeah, and going back on Hoying, too. Last year when they met up, he didn't have a stellar game. He went 11 for 28 with 98 yards and an interception. So you can tell this year he learned from his mistakes. And he's ready to come out. And he's been showing it. Yeah, poise is uh, really the word in watching him tonight. He's had good poise. Rolling out, throwing the ball on the run. They put uh, three receivers on the right side. And Hoying with time, running out of time, pulls it down, but he'll be pulled down. And that is a sack by the Hawks. They finally got in there. They got the pressure that they were looking for. And on the sack is Samuel LeMay. Huge play right there for the Hawks. Samuel May with a big sack right there, pushing him back a few multiple yards. Um, that really hurts Watterson right there in their field position. And Hartley needing a big defensive play, and they get one there, and they probably need a big stop of a pass or maybe even two here. Let's see. Second down to 15 after the five-yard loss on the sack. Hoing, more time, delivers, and that is caught. And, oh, a good tackle there is just over the 40-yard line. Brandon Trout had his uh, legs swept out from underneath him, and that was Sean Saunders. Even though he was down on the ground, he was able to make a last-ditch effort, and he saves what would have been a first down. Yeah, good job by Saunders right there, doing whatever he can to stop the first down and putting a third and five instead of a first down. And an important third and five, because this is not necessarily two-down territory right here. As Watterson is on the Hartley side of the field. Hoing looking with time, delivers, and he's got his man. And that's going to be a first down all the way up to the 45-yard line of the Hartley Hawks. He finally connected with his tight end, Davis Boone. You look at Boone, just look at his body type, and he's 6'3", 225 pounds. You know, as a quarterback, you like to have a big target like that to throw to. As there's the flag, and Hartley jumped early again. Sam LeMay. Well, again, as a coach, that'll drive you crazy because you just gave up uh, – but you gave up eight yards for a first down. Now you give him another five. Hoying with the empty backfield. Drops back. Has time to pass. And that is off the hands of the intended receiver, Brandon Trout. And he actually collided with a teammate. And uh, Tyler Young had Young on the outside cutting inside. And uh, you had Trout that was going the other way. Yeah, and again, we're seeing these passes clicking. It's just that sometimes it just goes right off the hand. So you could tell Hoying, his hand-eye coordination, his death procession is working for him right now. Nothing to lose on that because it was first and five. Now it's second and five. Nicholson breaks out of the backfield. A lot of shifting on this offensive line, and they're, they really have hardly spread out. And here's the throw, and that is incomplete. Nicholson, the man that was intended for, and there's a late flag. Two flags. So they're going to uh, call Deshaun Tucker for holding, defensive holding. So it'll be a first down, Watterson. And that hurts right there. You don't want to give Waters in any free first downs, especially the way they're clicking right now. 
especially in their own territory. So for Hartley, you got to get rid of these mental mistakes going further. First down to 10. Hoying, he's got pressure, and he throws on the run, but he's got Nicholson in the middle of the field, and he is up to the 20-yard line. Again, good job of throwing on the run by Jacob Hoying. Give him all the credit in the world tonight for the way he's been able to be uh, out of the pocket and delivering strikes. Now remember, one thing here is we get down to about three minutes left in this half. Watterson has burned all their timeouts in the first half. Hoying throwing for the end zone, trying to make that a uh, non-factor. And this is going to be an incomplete pass. Is going out of bounds after making the catch. Andrew Bettendorf could not stay in bounds. That was a good effort right there by Bettendorf reaching out. He made the catch. It's just that he didn't have many more room to work with. Yeah, very good attempt. Nicholson's going to line up as a wide out on the right side this time. Five wide receivers. And here's a pass. They look for Nicholson and, or excuse me, they look for Tyler Young and... He could not bring it in. Tyler Young was looking over his left shoulder. The ball was thrown over his right shoulder. He had to turn around and try to make the adjustment. Didn't have enough room to do that. Yeah, and if you're Warrison right here, you want you, you expect another pass, especially on a third and ten. I would imagine that if they don't get this fourth down right here, it'd be a field goal, which is still very good for him to be up 10-7 with two minutes left in the quarter. Now, one thing here is they don't have to go for it all. And they could go for an underneath pass and just try to gain some yardage. Again, it is two down territory. And, or as you said, if you want to kick a field goal, you can kick a field goal. And Hoying is rolling. And he pulls up. And there's pressure. And he throws it. And that is going to be a touchdown. Wow. What a catch. One-handed by Andrew Bettendorf. The back of the end zone. And it was a late indication, but touchdown is the call. That was a tremendous catch right there. I mean, outstretched one hand. It was just unbelievable to see that right there. And Hoying did a great job. And that's a huge momentum boost for Watterson being up 13-7 to right now with 2.45 left in the half. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the throw, perfect throw, because it's either going to be incomplete with no damage or it's going to be what it was, a touchdown. <laughs> you, the quarterback put it in a spot where that was not going to hurt him. Could only be benefit and nothing more. So that is uh, an extra point up and good by Carson Blank. And it is 14 to 14-7 with 2.45 remaining here in the first half. And the Hawks are now being challenged. They're challenging themselves in some ways because they've committed some penalties at uh, really bad times on drives. But Watterson has made them pay for those mistakes. And Hartley has 2 minutes and 45 seconds to see if they can uh, make up for some of those mistakes. They also will get the ball to start the third quarter. Yeah, Hartley definitely had some mental errors that really did just give Watterson some free first downs. But you got to give credit to Watterson. They're taking advantage of everything they have, and they're doing the best they can with what they have. And so far with a 14-7 to game, they're doing a tremendous job, especially last year. On the second quarter last year, it was really when it unraveled for Watterson. They gave up 19 points in the second quarter. That really just iced the game for him early. So give credit for them. They're poised, they're ready, and they're not giving up anything. Well, Watterson gets set to kick it away. I want to talk to you about Hutta and Price Orthodontics. Dr. Hutta has been doing orthodontics for a long, long time. He's now been joined by Dr. Price, and that means a good thing has just gotten better. If you have some orthodontic needs, or maybe you don't know that you have them, but you can find out by going to lovethatsmile.net. You can even schedule a free consultation. Short kick, and this is going to be taken at the 22-yard line. And getting back up to the 30-yard line is Deshaun Tucker, and that's where he is brought down. And that's where Hartley will begin here with 2.40 to go in the first half. They still do have two timeouts. And normally you would say, well, they like to run the football, so you'd have to have a big run here and use those timeouts. But we saw Peyton Underwood with a big pass on the last drive. Uh, that option, that threat is definitely there. Yeah, he's got a great arm, and you imagine that they could use it right here, so Watterson's going to be on their toes. 
Send Trey Saunders in motion, handed off to Niall Johnson, bouncing to the right side and leaning up over the 35-yard line. And the other thing here for the Hawks is they're they're not going to panic. They're going to play their game. As long as there's time on that clock, they will run the ball. Once they have to do something different, they will do something different. But uh, we expect them to try to pick up the pace here and see what they can get before the half. And, by the way, Ryan Hawk is a pretty good field goal uh, kicker too, so you don't have to get a touchdown. But you do have to get more than one yard, and that's all Niall Johnson gets here. So it's second down and three, or sorry, third down and three. And this is a big offensive play right here for Hartley. They don't want to give it back before the end of the half. Pitch it to Johnson to the near sideline. He comes, sidesteps a would-be tackler, and he winds up getting the first down. Good job there. Tackle made by Danny Siegel. Junior defensive back coming up to make the stop. Yeah, very crucial first down right there for the Hawks. Just keep moving the chains. Methodical is what they're trying to get right there, especially with two timeouts. 130 is perfect time for them. High formation. Underwood. Going to give it to Richard Kenny. And he's got room on the left side. There he goes. Kenny's got the first down and more. He's inside the 40, the 35, and knocked out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Well, they haven't run that yet, and Watterson was caught off guard, and there was nothing but green on the left side for Richard Kenny. Yeah, that was a good job by Richard also going out of bounds when he realized he had no more room just to save a timeout for him going later if they need it. Down a minute and 21 remaining here in the first half. Hartley's down by a touchdown, 14-7. to seven. Take the handoff to Johnson. Rolling right is Underwood. Didn't have much time, and dropping the football was Trey Saunders. I think that's one of those situations where you're looking to run before you actually have the ball in your hands because Peyton did a great job. He had a man right in his face and still delivered. Yeah, great job by Peyton right there, right on spot. Trayvon just had a really tough time just corralling it right there. So it is now second down and 10. And, boy, if you give Trey Saunders the ball – with that much open room around him, who knows what can happen. But it didn't happen. So it's second down and 10. Saunders comes in motion. They hand it off to him. Coming toward the near sideline, and that was sealed off. There is a flag. And that's going to be a hold against the offense. Another costly error. Nicholas Ewell again with a, a nice play from his linebacker position to come over there and make sure that uh, Saunders couldn't turn that ball upfield. As it turns out, even if he did, it wouldn't have counted, but they had it under control. Marcellus Parker, again, that's the second time he's been called for a hold on that very same play. Yeah, mental errors right now are really tough for the Hogs. These penalties are really killing him so far early on in the game, both on the offensive and defensive side. 109 to go here in the first half. Underwood now goes into the shotgun position. Saunders comes in motion, handed off to Johnson, and he gets back inside the 40-yard line. There's another flag. And it's another hold against the Hawks. Well, we talked last week. There was one scrimmage game. So they didn't get their regular reps in. Andrew McFeeders is the one they call on that hold. And that's not an excuse. It's a fact. But here's another fact. you got to stop doing this because you're just putting yourself in terrible position. They're now looking at a second down and forever. Underwood takes a snap, has time, throws. Left side, and that ball is going to be incomplete. Saunders, the intended receiver. And I'll tell you this, Dom Orsini was sitting back there, just playing center field, ready to pick that thing off and give Trey Saunders a heck of a lot of credit. He didn't make the catch, but he made sure Orsini didn't make the catch either. Yeah, that was great coverage right there by Watterson, but Trayvon also did a great job at making sure that the ball was intercepted. And Payne also had a good job at um, throwing it. It was pretty much on target, honestly. It's just that there was just so many people right there that it was hard to make the catch. There is another flag. That's a 15-yard penalty. They're back to their own 30-yard line. 
and they've got to go 52 yards to get a first down. I would say, for the most part, you're just getting out of this half and going to try on the first drive of the third quarter. It is second down. Underwood fakes a handoff, wants to throw. Gets hit as he lets it go, and that's incomplete. And now we've got uh, another flag on the field. I can tell you who doesn't want the half to end, the officials. My goodness. And what is this call? I said Trey Saunders was uh, an eligible receiver downfield. So th this is tough. I mean, going into the half, you're you're not feeling good about anything if you're Bishop Hartley right now. And again, they'll get the ball right back to start the third quarter. And right now, they just want to get out of this as best that they can. Hand it off. Saunders comes near side, tries to cut back, and will be brought down at the 42-yard line. And they will just let the clock roll here. Again, in a different situation, Trey probably just cuts for the sideline and stops the clock, but that's going to do it for the first half. Again, Bishop Hartley scored the first points of this game. Then Bishop Watterson came alive. They have put together back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. And so, at the end of the first half, Watterson, through throwing the football, throwing it on target, making the big plays, they are leading the Hawks by the score of 14-7. to We have reached the half here at Jack Ryan Field. You're listening to Hartley Hawks football. The Central Ohio Spina Bifida Alliance is a nonprofit organization that provides services such as annual fundraisers, helping with medical expenses, vehicle modifications, and much more. This year, they are hosting a virtual 5K, which allows you to do it on your own time, wherever and however you want to. The event is October 2nd through 4th, and 100% of the proceeds will go to the organization, which is completely run by volunteers. Visit scoreonair.com and click the link at the top of the page to register. The deadline is September 27th, and everyone who signs up receives a shirt and a goodie bag. Cosmo 5K. Catch us if you can. Gehanna Auto Sales, family-owned and customer-first approach, takes the frustration, runaround, and high-pressure sales out of the car buying experience. Let Gehanna Auto Sales earn your business on your next car purchase. Check out their large selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs at GehannaAutoSales.com or visit Craig and Kyle in person at 180 Mill Street in Gehanna. Gehanna Auto Sales, how the car buying process should be. Teamwork. It's what makes high school football great. And it's what makes the Kendall team of REMAX Town Center your winning real estate team. Central Ohio is a top-ranked place to live in the nation. And you need to talk to Ron Kendall about the opportunities available now that can put you in a new home. You deserve an upgrade for your family. Let our team help. The Kendall team of REMAX Town Center. Find us online at kendallteam.com or at 614-325-6295. Are you passionate about sports talk and production? Then the Ohio Media School is right for you. Here, you can become a pro in front of the camera and behind the scenes. In six months, you'll be trained by the best in play-by-play, -play, talk shows, filming, editing, audio, and more. Join the family by applying today, and you'll be closer to your dream career. For more information, visit beyondair.com or call the Columbus campus at 614-655-5250. Ohio Media School. Learn from a pro to be a pro. We are at the half at Bishop Hartley, and the Hawks are trailing by the score of 14-7 to to Bishop Watterson, Bob McElligot, and Gino Hoffman back here with you. And, uh, you know, once again, Gino, we just talked about it uh, throughout that first half. But uh, for the Hawks, they are making way too many mistakes. They've got to cut down on the mistakes, really almost to the point they've got to eliminate the mistakes uh, the rest of the way through here. Yeah, these penalties, especially in the second quarter, have been really tough on them. Honestly, you could argue that it led to Juarez's second score of the game. Then it pushed him back from even scoring back, answering back. So if you're Hartley, if you're Coach Birchfield, you want to go back and you want to correct those mistakes. And they usually do a great job after the second half going in. 
they make corrections, and they usually play a pretty clean ball game after. So, obviously, the penalties are number one concern for them. Yeah, big time. On, and both sides of the ball is where they had problems with that. Uh, let's talk about Jacob Hoying. What a job he is doing running this offense for Bishop Watterson. Again, a lot of poise in his game here tonight. Uh, he's A lot of those balls he's throwing, he's on the move, so they're trying to move the pocket and make it tough on the Hawks to get pressure. They haven't gotten pressure very many times. Yeah, he's been tremendous. I mean, he's been on point in almost every pass, whether it be incomplete or complete, two touchdown passes. He definitely is showing that senior uh, leadership and the senior capability of improvement that he's been since last year. And especially given last game, he only threw for 98 yards, so, or 93 yards, excuse me. So he's been very surprising. And I think if you're Watterson, this is exactly what you want. You want to give that threat right there to make room for Cam Nicholson, their star running back. Yeah, and they still haven't even used Cam Nicholson very much, not as a running back. They've thrown to him a couple of times out of the backfield. Uh, he is a threat. You know, it's easy to say, well, look for them to mix that in in the second half of this game. But I think right now it's one of those, if it ain't, fi if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, if they're throwing the football and they're having success with that, and, and that's where it looks like the Hawks are a little bit uh, inefficient right now is in the pass coverage, they'll probably just keep doing that. Yeah, I think if Hoying's hot, you want, to, want him to stay hot right there because if you can get him going, it just really changes the whole outlook for this team and really gives another threat for him. Yeah, indeed. So uh, for Hoying, he was a star of the first half without question, leading his team to two touchdown drives, and that was after – uh, the first couple of os offensive drives by Bishop Watterson looked like uh, they might have a really tough night and that they might not be able to, to get things going. But, yes, they did. They got them going, and they have the lead at the half. 14-7 to is uh, what it is with Watterson getting back-to-back -to -back touchdowns and holding that lead. Hartley does get the ball to start the third quarter of this game, and uh, we'll talk about that as we continue from Jack Ryan Field. Here at halftime, this is Hartley Hawks football. Good evening, good times at TAT. Chef Jimmy at the TAT corner of James and Livingston says, come on down. The TAT's delicious Italian-American specialties are so nice and nicer. And the Corovas are going above and beyond to keep their guests and employees safe. Try this dine-in special, pasta dinner for two, with soup, salad, bread, and dessert, just $29.95. Or this carry-out deal, family pasta dinner for four, with salad, pasta, meatballs, and bread for $27.99. Add a bottle of select wine, and you're out the door with a dinner for four for $35.99. With wine, the dining room's open and safe. But if you're not comfortable dining in, call ahead and order TAT curbside carry-out. The TAT at the corner of James and Livingston, 614-236-1392, where the Corova family makes you feel welcome like nobody else. Good evening, good times at TAT. Bob Boyd Auto Family in Lancaster treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. You have high expectations and specific needs when buying a car. Bob Boyd enjoys the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Bob Boyd Auto to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They have an experienced sales staff eager to share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you. Browse the inventory from anywhere by going to BobBoyd.com. While you're there, schedule a test drive and check out financing options. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. The Central Ohio Spina Bifida Alliance is a nonprofit organization that provides services such as annual fundraisers, helping with medical expenses, vehicle modifications, and much more. This year, they are hosting a virtual 5K, which allows you to do it on your own time, wherever and however you want to. The event is October 2nd through 4th, and 100% of the proceeds will go to the organization, which is completely run by volunteers. Visit scoreonair.com and click the link at the top of the page to register. The deadline is September 27th, and everyone who signs up receives a shirt and a goodie bag. Cosmo 5K. Catch us if you can. Halftime here at Bishop Hartley, and the Hawks are trailing Bishop Watterson by the score of 14-7. to Gino with uh, Hartley getting the ball here at the start of quarter number three. What is not just necessary, what's almost imperative for them to, to get their game back here at the start of this second half and, and try to take that tone and, and set it the way they did in the first quarter of the game? I think they need to start the, start the second half like they started the first, first drive of the offensive drive of the game. 
Um, it was a very methodical run for their first score. And I think they need to get that going to get back to where their bread and butter is, what their MO is. And I think that's very important, as well as make sure they don't make any mental mistakes to hurt themselves. If they want to get hurt, they want them to hurt them. They don't want to hurt themselves and make those mental errors. So I think that's going to be very important. But if they just stick to what they know, they should be in good shape. Because it's not like it's a super blowout game right now. It's no, a seven-point game. That's right. They're within uh, one score of getting right back there. You're absolutely right about that. In the the running game right now, um, you know, they, they always mix a lot of guys around. They're, they're leaning on uh, Niall Johnson a little bit. And Marcellus Parker, his biggest problem in that first half in blocking was the holds. A couple of big holds that uh, negated some runs or put him in a, in a bad spot. Maybe he would have only gotten three yards, but maybe instead of a third down and two, all of a sudden, you know, it's a third down and, and nine. Yeah, it's been very interesting for Marcellus Parker. He's a guy that's usually more of a threat as a running back as well. Um, he's been like that for the past two years. And you figure that after with Jalen January and guys like Mason Sawyer not being there, he'd be the big guy right there to get you your one-yard runs and just to really keep the chains going. So maybe you'll see more of him in this half, or maybe you just see him more as a blocking and just getting rid of those mental errors. Yeah, well, uh, there are a lot of things you're talking about right now. And, um, again, because of the season and because of the rules, teams don't go to locker rooms anymore. They just kind of meet down in the end zone. And uh, as, uh, as my son put it to me, oh, you mean it's like middle school football? Yeah, just go down, have a seat, and have a quick talk, and then you get right back to it. That can work for you. That can work against you. Um, you know, for Hartley, I'm sure they can't wait to get back out on the field here, take the kickoff, and get into good field position and uh, try to turn it around. So we'll find out if they're able to do that here very shortly. The second half is about to begin from Jack Ryan Field here at Bishop Hartley, and we'll bring it to you with the Hawks trailing Bishop Watterson by the score of 14-7. to Good evening, good times at C-A-T. Chef Jimmy at the T-A-T corner of James and Livingston says, Come on down. The TAT's delicious Italian-American specialties are so nice and nicer And the Corovas are going above and beyond to keep their guests and employees safe. Try this dine-in special, pasta dinner for two, with soup, salad, bread, and dessert, just $29.95. Or this carry-out deal, family pasta dinner for four, with salad, pasta, meatballs, and bread for $27.99. Add a bottle of select wine, and you're out the door with a dinner for four for $35.99. With wine, the dining room's open and safe. But if you're not comfortable dining in, call ahead and order TAT curbside carry-out. The TAT at the corner of James and Livingston, 614-236-1392, where the Corova family makes you feel welcome like nobody else. Good evening, good times with TAT. Bob Boyd Auto Family in Lancaster treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. You have high expectations and specific needs when buying a car. Bob Boyd enjoys the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Bob Boyd Auto to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They have an experienced sales staff eager to share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you. Browse the inventory from anywhere by going to BobBoyd.com. While you're there, schedule a test drive and check out financing options. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. Teamwork. It's what makes high school football great. And it's what makes the Kendall team of REMAX Town Center your winning real estate team. Central Ohio is a top-ranked place to live in the nation, and you need to talk to Ron Kendall about the opportunities available now that can put you in a new home. You deserve an upgrade for your family. Let our team help. The Kendall team of REMAX Town Center. Find us online at kendallteam.com or at 614-325-6295. Bishop Hartley down 14-7 to here at halftime. The teams are back on the field and getting stretched and getting ready to uh, go back at it for the second half of this game. First of two matchups this year between these two teams because of the schedule and the way it works out. Every team playing a six-game schedule. And for Hartley and Watterson, they will play a home-and-home home this time uh, instead of just that one-time-a-year matchup where whoever wins uh, gets the bragging rights. Um, the Hawks playing Watterson here, and then in a couple of weeks we'll go over to Bishop Watterson and play against them over there. Gino, I, li- I like that setup. I, I think it's great. You usually have to wait to get that uh, second opportunity. It's just a once-a-year thing. And, yes, I know it's special, but, hey, two times in the same year, what the heck? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting, too, to see how teams make adjustment in the middle of the season. They're going to see the same team twice now, and it's not like they lost anybody. So it's going to be interesting to see you know, whoever loses, how they make adjustments the next game and see how they prepare for it. 
yeah, making adjustments is uh, exactly what it's going to be about. And for the Hawks, it's uh, about making adjustments in this game to try to come back down 14-7 to at the half. The second half kickoff is coming your way as we continue from Jack Ryan Field. This is Hartley Hawks football. Gahanna Auto Sales, family-owned and customer-first approach, takes the frustration, runaround, and high-pressure sales out of the car buying experience. Let Gahanna Auto Sales earn your business on your next car purchase. Check out their large selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs at GahannaAutoSales.com or visit Craig and Kyle in person at 180 Mill Street in Gahanna. Gahanna Auto Sales, how the car buying process should be. Are you passionate about sports talk and production? Then the Ohio Media School is right for you. Here, you can become a pro in front of the camera and behind the scenes. In six months, you'll be trained by the best in play-by-play, talk shows, filming, editing, audio, and more. Join the family by applying today, and you'll be closer to your dream career. For more information, visit BeOnAir.com or call the Columbus campus at 614-655-5250. Ohio Media School. Learn from a pro to be a pro. Hello, Hawks. Huddling up before uh, taking this second half kickoff and getting back to play. Bishop Watterson feeling good about their game, both offensively and defensively. And defensively, Gino, we didn't even touch on that. When the Hawks had their first possession, uh, they just marched right down the field. They put the ball in the end zone. After that, the Watterson defense played much, much better. Yeah, they did a great job adapting after that first drive and really making the corrections that they need. And Hartley's been silenced ever since. And they will hope not to be silenced here to start the second half, but remember, when we finished the first half, it was uh, the Hawks going backwards. They were uh, committing penalties. They were looking at a third down, 47 to try to convert. So they hope in that 13-minute break that they just took <laughs> that they sweep that uh, everything clean there and, and get rid of all of that. But we'll find out as we get going here in the second half. Watterson getting set to tee the ball up at the 40-yard uh, line. Eager to get things underway. The only problem was they were going to kick it the wrong direction. The Hawks are going to go left to right here. Carson Blank, the senior kicker, will tee it up. You know, I mentioned in the first half that uh, Watterson lost last week in overtime, and you know, a couple of missed kicks in that game. That was really the difference. Uh, you missed some extra points, and that was the difference in them having to go to overtime. So uh, today they've been good. Carson Blank has hit both of his extra points. And the left-footed kicker is set to put it in the air here to start the second half. And he drills this one. Trey Saunders will take it at the nine. Saunders looking for blocks, bouncing toward the outside. He is across the 20 and the 25. And they will put him at the 26-yard line, and that's where the Hawks will begin this drive. Nice job there, 17 yards on the kick return. And Peyton Underwood had a good first half. We saw him throwing the ball near the end of the half. Of course, it had to do with uh, the long yardage situation to get a first down. But, Gino, we've also seen him taking a uh, taking a couple of hits while delivering the ball and staying right in there. Yeah, he's done a very good job so far, making really nice passes and always on point. Um, it's just that it's been tough right now because of the penalties. Now Johnson has nowhere to go. The moment he gets the football put in his hands, he is tackled. And that was a, a good play there by Tanner Mercer, senior linebacker who got penetration through the line and was right there to drop the ball carrier for a three-yard loss. Second down 13 play here for Peyton Underwood. Brings Kenny in motion, gives a quick inside handoff to Nile Johnson, who just gets back to the 25-yard line. So... Pickup of two, and the Hawks are looking at a third down and 11 here. And you can tell this Watterson defense at their half is still ready to go. We were talking about them earlier to start this half and how they did a really good job, and right now it's been no difference. They've been stuffing this running game. Yeah, they brought Richard Kenny faking the jet sweep and then decided to go with the inside handoff, and you're right. It did not fool the defense whatsoever. 
Three receivers set here for the Hawks. And Underwood rolling right, and he throws on the run, and he's got Trey Saunders. And that is close to the first down. But I don't think it's going to quite be there. It looks like they're going to mark it at the 35-yard line, which would leave a fourth down and one. And Hartley sending in uh, sending in some size here. They're going to go for it on fourth down and one. Expect guys like Marcellus Parker to play a big role right here, just trying to muzzle through and just get that one yard. Well, Underwood. Try to get them off sides if he can with a hard snap count. They will hand it off. And Niall Johnson, he's got the first down as he's up to the 39-yard line. That's good work right there. Yeah, you can pound it up the middle, and he did. He went up the middle, and he got his yard, and he said, you know what, there's a little bit of room here on the right side. I'll take a few more. Yeah, great footwork right there by Niall Johnson. You know, after the first down, getting the first down, he decided, you know what, let's get a little bit more and just try to keep moving the chains. That's exactly what he does. And Hartley has a, you know, what could have been a bad situation there. They were looking at a second down and 13. They're able to convert and get something positive out of it. Offset eye formation here behind Underwood, and he'll pitch it to Johnson. It's a bad pitch, and now has to just dive on the ball at the 32-yard line. And that's just a mental error right there. Not in the form of a penalty. It just hurt right there that they couldn't get the pass right there. Just a mental break, but if you're Hartley, you got to rebound from that. Yeah, again, situation where they just were, except this time it's second down and 17. So they've dug a little deeper hole. Go with the tight formation. They'll hand it off to uh, Trey Saunders on the counter play, and he lost the football and was able to get it back on the 30-yard line. So they lose more yardage. And they've got to go... All the way up to the 49-yard line for first down. So it is third down and 19. And that could have been a lot worse for Hartley right there because there are multiple waters and defenders right next to Saunders. You know, good, good, good thing for Saunders right there to just get on top of the football and preventing from a fumble recovery. Trey Saunders and Richard Kenny, the receivers. Now Johnson goes into a slot formation here with Marcellus Parker, the only running back. Underwood with a throw. Down the far sideline, Richard Kenny is there, and that is a first down. Oh, just a great throw. Put it in the air. Let your speedster run underneath it. Kenny brings it in at the 42-yard line. That's the second time now we've seen Peyton Underwood and Richard Kenny connecting. Obviously, Richard Kenny is, is a very important part of this offense, taking over Philip Cole from two years ago, and he's been showing that he's the next Philip Cole. Yeah, nice job there utilizing his speed. Talked earlier about the quarterback. Just your job is to manage this offense. Well, right there, put it in the air where your guy can get it. Now, they give it to Saunders coming around behind. He tried to stay on his feet and just couldn't do it. That's actually a, a nice job of hanging on by Sam Intahar. Saunders gets to the 39-yard line, so he picks up a couple. An official coming in from the near sideline and he they had pulled the ball back they were actually cheating themselves a yard and again with this uh, the new rules the officials don't touch the football they just lay down the uh, the orange marker that you can see on the field there and that's where the center comes out and he puts the nose of the football so it was back a little bit too far Second down seven. Here's a pitch. Now Johnson able to get the handle on the ball and able to get some positive yardage, believe it or not, as he got to the 36-yard line. Boy, at the beginning of that play, you were going to wonder, or you had to wonder if he was going to be able to hold on to the football. Not only does he hold on to it, but he's still able to navigate his way ahead and still leave you with about a third down and five. Yeah, that was great hand-eye coordination right there by Niall Johnson, preventing what could have been a fumble and ending up being a pretty nice positive yards for a third and five. We go with three men in the backfield this time to the Hawks. One of those men will break out of formation. Now Johnson goes up the middle. He finds some room on the right side, cuts back to the 30-yard line, and will make it to the 27. Boy, just when it looked like there was nothing there. Niall Johnson turned it into something and turns it into a first down. 
And right now what we're seeing is that methodical drive from Hartley. Just continually pounding the run game. And when needed, they pass. And they succeed right there. And this is what they need to start off the half. Yeah, they need this and they need some points. And they're hoping that one leads to the other. Go with a split back look this time for Peyton Underwood, who pitches it to Marcellus Parker. And Parker, he's got a little bit of running room. He was uh, caught from behind by Nicholas Ewell, but still is able to lumber ahead for good yardage. And give him five on that. And again, you mentioned this earlier. Marcellus, he's been used as a feature back. Uh, they haven't used him like that yet in this game. He's also one of those guys, and I think it's it's fair to say in a normal year, you get the first couple of games and they feel out what everybody's going to do, what their strengths are going to be. He's kind of a second half kind of a guy, second half of the year, but here he takes the quick inside handoff, and he says, I'm not waiting any longer to be a feature back. I'm just going to take this thing right inside the 20-yard line for a first down. Yeah, and he's just pounding right there, getting those yards after contact, which is always what Hartley does a great job. It's what they did a great job against last year. Every time, they would just get those extra yardage, and the offensive line did a great job in pushing the running back over for some more yards. Well, it is about the line. The offensive line makes a difference, and that's why they can hand the ball to so many different guys and have so many of the same results. Underwood pitches it to Marcellus Parker, but this time he's going to be tripped up. This is just a, a nice job on the tackle. And uh, losing his shoe and everything to make the tackle right there was Tanner Mercer. That was another strange-looking play because uh, Underwood turned and tossed it. It, it was just—it was just odd. It didn't look natural. Yeah, it seems like these plays um, has, has been just a little bit odd. We've already had two um, missed fumbled balls that have been recovered by Hartley, so it's been a very uh, interesting drive overall. Here's a pitch to Al Johnson. Comes to the near sideline, and he will be brought down near the 10-yard line. That's a nice pickup. That'll leave him with a uh, third down and short coming up here. And of course, two down territory, down by touchdown. Third down and three. Right now they have Johnson... Lined up on the left side, Marcellus Parker, the lone running back. Send Trey Saunders in motion. They hand it off quickly to Marcellus Parker, and he just spins forward, and he should have the first down. And he does have the first down, and it's going to bring up a first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Remember, Hartley got the ball to start this quarter. There's four minutes left in it. And they have just been slowly marching down the field. The big play was a pass from Underwood to Richard Kenny to convert on a third and long. Here's Trey Saunders over the left side. Flag is thrown. Looks to be a hold. Or it's thrown in the area where it could be holding. That's the phrasing, right? But it's a chop block. It is still against the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. That's a hurtful penalty. Not that there are many good penalties, but 15-yarders when you're down at the 8-yard line are not good. As these mental mistakes like we talked about in the first half that have really been hurting Hartley. Um, first down still. They're still in fairly good position, but at 23 yards for the first down, it's going to be very tough to capitalize. Yeah, you got 23 yards to go for that. You may just go for the end zone here, depending how it all works out. Now Johnson gets the ball, breaks a tackle. Nice little footwork there, and he still is on his feet and still continuing to move forward, and he is back down near the 10-yard line. Now that'll get you right back in it on one play. Good job by Now Johnson. Again, it was another play that at the beginning didn't look good at all. It was an odd exchange between Underwood and Johnson. And uh, Niall was able to find the room that he needed to make something work. Yeah, he's got he's been showing very good footwork in this game, just using his uh his good footwork and just faking out the defenders and trying to get as many extra yards as possible. So now it's a second down and goal from the ten. Peyton Underwood sends a man in motion. They hand it off to Trey Saunders, and Saunders bounces to the outside, breaks a tackle. 
Good job because it looked like he was going to be tackled maybe after a short gain, almost for a loss, but he gets the Hawks back to uh, pretty much where they started. So they are back here at the uh, seven-yard line here. Third down and goal. Kenny comes around behind. Underwood rolls. And he throws toward the end zone. And that is caught by Richard Kenny for the touchdown. What a way to cap off that drive. A seven-yard touchdown pass, Peyton Underwood to Richard Kenny. And the Hawks are an extra point away from tying this game. Great job by Underwood. All of his passes that he's completed, they've been very huge plays, and he's made them count. And they've always been the Richard Kenny. So Kenny's done a great job of being the target for Peyton Underwood in this game. And this is a very big momentum boost right there, especially given the fact that this was a nine-yard drive, nine-minute drive. So it's really taking Larson off the field, which is really going to hurt them. Ryan Hawk will attempt the extra point and try to tie this game at 14. And Hawks' kick is good. And just like that, Hartley has reestablished themselves on the offense. They come down the field, and they score to make it a 14-14 game. So, Gino, as you said, almost a nine-minute drive right there. Just the way you wanted to start the quarter, uh, you know, they did. They erased most of the mistakes, not all of them. But what was really impressive about that, they commit the 15-yard penalty in a first and goal situation they still come all the way back and they get the touchdown and i like the play call with richard kenny there he comes around on that jet sweep so many times they don't hand him the ball but they throw it to him for the touchdown and hey you put that kind of weapon in there you know it's going to make defenses guess what is this is this a run or is this a pass and you can catch him off guard yeah i think they did definitely catch the larson defense off guard i think they expected running all the way because that's what it was like for almost the whole entire drive so that was very surprising, but Hartley did a great job of taking advantage of that and telling Larson, hey, we can pass too the same way you guys can. Yeah, for Peyton Underwood, he is getting more entrenched in the offense here this week. Uh, you know, last week he threw the ball a couple of times, but uh, he's had to throw more in this game because of long yardage situations, but uh, he looks like he's getting more comfortable. And, and again, when he gets comfortable as a young quarterback and he's got a good arm, that gives you another dimension to your game. Yeah, especially as a sophomore quarterback that really builds on the future for him. If you can get him comfortable now, there's no telling what he could be junior and senior year. Ryan Hawk will kick it off here. 14-14 game now will be the Hartley defense that will be asked to step up and do the job. At first, it's all about the kick coverage. And Ryan Hawk with a little chip shot toward the near sideline. Richard Kenny couldn't get underneath it. And uh, there are flags all over the place here. So the ball was taken at the 40-yard line. Well, Richard Kenny takes a 15-yard penalty for the late hit. So uh, Richard Kenny makes a great play, catches a touchdown pass, and then makes a not-so-great play on special teams. Yeah, and that puts the Warriors in offense, who was red hot in the first half and really good field position to start off with three minutes to go in the third quarter. First down to 10, Jacob Poing on the field for the first time in this half. Sends Cam Nicholson out of the backfield to line up as a wide out on the left side. And Hoing throw over the middle, and that is caught. Richard Kenny trying to drag down... The receiver, Tyler Young, he finally does, but that's after a good gain of about seven yards. And another complete right pass right there from Hoying, picking up where he left off in the half. It was going to be very interesting to see what happened right there because it took nine minutes for them to get back on the field in this quarter after a halftime, so that extended time off is going to be very interesting to see how you adjust and how you feel. Well, yeah, that's a good point. But as you said, if that pass was any indication, he's still feeling okay. It was a nice little pass over the middle. Again, it was good for seven. Hoying with an empty backfield and time. Throws to the near sideline, and this ball is caught, and that's going to be inside the 15. Tyler Young making the reception. 
Richard Kenny never even turned around, and that ball dropped in right over top of him into the receiver's arms. Another great pass right there over the shoulder catch by the Rye receiver and just a really big gain and putting them in the red zone now. Again, the inability to get pressure on that quarterback is a big deal here because Hoying has just had uh, pretty much all the time he wants, for the most part, to lay back there. And when he – sometimes it's a designed rollout and throw. Again, here's time as he delivers that ball, and it is picked off. The ball got tipped and never touched the ground, and the Hartley Hawks pick it off. With the ball in his hands. Hey, Sean Saunders, what a big turnover for Bishop Hartley. Big time play right there. Momentum boost for Hartley after scoring on that methodical drive. Quick job by Watterson getting two straight passes downfield, but that's a race right there with the interception. Again, Hoying throwing for the tight end, and the ball goes off a hand, up in the air, and then just gets picked off. 2.29 to go here in the third quarter, and Hartley back on offense. Underwood set up in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands it off to Niall Johnson, and Johnson has got himself a first down, and he almost broke that for a potential touchdown. Just a uh, saving tackle right there at the end of the play. And uh, that tackle was made by Dom Orsini. We can tell this Hartley offense is now starting to get the wheels rolling. Some big time plays so far to start off the half, and now we are seeing they're picking up where they left off. Again, just a handoff out of the shotgun for big yardage. Offset eye formation. And uh, again, Johnson getting to the 30 yard line. Only picks up a couple this time. Man, he's looked good in this game. He's, you know, quietly put together a nice game, whether it's uh, the big run or the little runs like that. They all add up by the end of the night. Yeah, he's made some very important plays right now, with our, like you said, with those big runs, but also those little runs, trying to get as many positive yards as possible with his footwork. So he's done a great job so far, and he's been the main running back for this game. They've got Trey Saunders back there now. They give it to him. Look out. He's got speed. He's got some open room inside the 50-yard uh, line. Still on his feet. Breaks a tackle. The 30, the 20, sidesteps another tackler. Touchdown, Bishop Hartley. Just what we were talking about, Hartley with Trent Nile Johnson. We just see the depth of that running back position still. Trayvon Saunders with a huge play for the touchdown, giving them the lead already in the third quarter. Goes over 70 yards to get that touchdown. And, uh, boy, change of half, change of fortune in this game. Hartley now back on top. And it could be by a full seven points here after Ryan Hawk is done. They have owned this third quarter. He uh, took a turnover and transformed it into points. And that kick is good by Ryan Hawk, and it's a 21-14 game in favor of Bishop Hartley. So all of a sudden, it's Watterson that is stunned now, but knowing they're only down by a touchdown with a quarterback that despite that interception is throwing the ball well tonight. Yeah, we could tell that they, they can get the ball downfield quick, especially in the passing game that we saw. Other than that interception, they could have easily gotten a touchdown, and honestly, half the time Hartley did for that um, long methodical run to start the game. So if you're Watterson, this is very important. That senior leadership, that senior experience is going to be very important for them just to not be uh, phased by what just happened and just go out there and play football. Yeah, and that's going to be the important part, what you just said. You can't be phased by it. You just got to go back out there and go to work. Shake off the interception. We'll see if the Hartley defense can uh, turn in another big play here. Or a couple of big plays. But where they were at the end of the second quarter to where they are as we're almost at the end of the third quarter is absolute night and day. Good job of resetting and you know putting behind you, putting the pass behind you and just looking ahead and doing the job. And that has been the difference. See if Hawk uh, drives it deep this time. That last one, Richard Kenny, they tried to put it to where he could run underneath it. 
and it didn't work out. And then Kenny hit the man who had made a fair catch call and resulted in 15-yard penalty. This one goes into the end zone, and it's going to be, and it starts at the 20-yard line this drive for Watterson does. Yeah, so again, just think about that. I mean, they, they got the ball on the interception, but where it should have started at the 37-yard line, it started inside the 50-yard line. Uh, again, it's, it's those mistakes, and right now the Hawks have put their game together where they're surviving them, and they are much less frequent than they were at the end of the first half, but, you know, it's still been a theme in this game. Yeah, and if you're Watterson right now, you just got to make sure that, like you said, they were at way better field position right there. So they really... The stuff that they took advantage of in the first half, they didn't do it in this half so far. So if you're Watterson, you got to make something out of nothing now. So they start at the 20. Hoying trying to set up his receivers. Puts Young in motion. Rolls to the right and throws on the run. And he's got two men downfield and couldn't find either one of them. That was just one of those situations where uh, the underneath man was Sam Intohar. Brandon Trout was a little bit deeper, and the ball fell right between the two. Yeah, it was great coverage, too, by the two cornerbacks right there, staying on top of those Watterson wide receivers and making sure they don't get anything free. Yeah, that's very well put. Don't give anything away here. In uh, the latter part of this third quarter and into the fourth quarter, you've got yourself a one-touchdown lead right now. you got to cover, and you've got to tackle. Here's a handoff, and Nicholson over the right side didn't get very far. Good job of pursuit by the Hawks. And um, Daniel Tucson was one of the guys that was in there, as always, and Together with Sam LeMay. These two guys have been busy on that defensive line in this game. Third down and seven. Big third down play for Watterson. Hoying with time. Throws over the middle. It's picked off. Off the hands of Nicholson. But there is a flag on the play. Marcellus Parker wound up with the ball in his hands. But it looks like it's going to be a defensive holding call against Hartley. And that's a big break by Watterson right there because you don't want that to be another interception already in the third quarter because that would have really just brought momentum all the way into the Hawks' favor still. So, again... It was a third and seven. It would have been an interception. You would have had the ball deep in Watterson territory. Instead, the Eagles wind up with a first down. That's a big break by Watterson right there. You hope, if you're Watterson, that's one of those things that you just want to capitalize on is those mental errors like they did in the first half. 42 seconds left here in the third quarter. Young goes in motion. They pitch it to Nicholson. He tries to dance back to the inside. LeMay got a piece of him, and then he gets finished off. By the rest of the Hawks, and leading the charge there was Deontay Hubbard. Picks up two. So Watterson is kind of loitering around with 10 seconds left on the clock. Looks like they'll be content to go to the fourth quarter. Now, why wouldn't you be? Third quarter was not very kind to you. Might as well... Turn around and go the other direction and see what you can do from there. Three quarters in the books here at Jack Ryan Field, and it's Bishop Hartley leading Bishop Watterson by the score of 21-14. to 14. This is Hartley Hawks football. Chef Jimmy at the TAT corner of James and Livingston says, come on down. The TAT's delicious Italian-American specialties are so nice and nicer. And the Corovas are going above and beyond to keep their guests and employees safe. 
Try this dine-in special, pasta dinner for two, with soup, salad, bread, and dessert, just $29.95. Or this carry-out deal, family pasta dinner for four, with salad, pasta, meatballs, and bread for $27.99. Add a bottle of select wine, and you're out the door with a dinner for four for $35.99. With wine, the dining room's open and safe. But if you're not comfortable dining in, call ahead and order TAT curbside carry-out. The TAT at the corner of James and Livingston, 614-236-1392, where the Corova family makes you feel welcome like nobody else. Good evening, good times for TAT. Fourth quarter, ready to begin. Bishop Watterson looking at a second down and eight. They are trailing in this game, 21 to 14. Bob McElligan, Geno Hoffman with you here tonight. Both of these teams starting the evening with a record of 0-1. Jacob Hoying. And the shotgun. Hoing drops back. Tries to step forward. And will be able to make the throw. And that is caught up over the 50-yard line. And going down the middle of the field. Inside the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. And into the end zone for the touchdown is Brandon Trout. But there is a flag. And it's all the way back at the 34-yard line. And this one is coming back. Well, that time it's a mistake on the other side. Yeah, big break right there for Hartley because that would have been a huge momentum boost for Watterson to start off the fourth quarter. That was a great job by Hoying, too, after contact, still scrambling, getting that pass in. If you're him, that's a very draining play right there to not have that count. Yeah, Hoying looked to be in trouble there a couple of times, and you know, usually in a play like that, that's uh, where you can get a hold. You see your quarterback's in trouble. He's just trying to make something out of nothing. Turned out to be a huge play. Well, would have been a huge play. Turned out to be nothing because of the hold. Well, Brandon Trout thought he had a big gain for a touchdown, but he does not. Back him up 10 yards. Second down and 19. Send three receivers out to the left side. Hand the ball off. Nicholson, he's going to that left side. He's got a lot of room. He's got the first down and more. Down the far sideline, across the 50-yard line. He doesn't get knocked out of bounds until he is at about the 47. We're seeing Nicholson being used right there. He's been pretty quiet so far tonight. Hartley's done a great job containing him, but he's obviously, for great running backs, he's due to break out at some point during the game, and right there it seems like right that. It's that time. Yeah, he uh, he took advantage of that. They lined up the three receivers there, but then they handed the ball off, and he had nothing but open space. Watterson shifting again on the line of scrimmage. Empty backfield with the five receivers set, and Hoying with the throw down the far sideline, and that is going to be caught inside the 25. That's a first down. Good job of hauling that one in by Andrew Bettendorf. That's one of those things we're seeing from Morrison right now. They're not being phased out of that holding penalty right there. They just said we're just going to come back. We're going to try and, you know, just keep moving the chains. They've made some pretty big plays so far now. Yeah, they have. They're quick strike, and they're going attacking the corners is what they're doing right now. First down at 10. Hoying rolls, pulls up, throws, incomplete. Tried to find the tight end right between a pair of defenders, Niall Johnson and Trayvon Saunders. Davis Boone unable to get free enough to make the catch of that ball. And that's good coverage right there by Johnson and Saunders, right? Um, just making sure that Hoying doesn't give a good target to pass to him. Second down at 10. Well, Hartley forced an interception earlier in this half. Would have had a second one had they not committed a defensive holding penalty. And both of those interceptions came on tip balls. Hoying, plenty of time. Throws, and that's incomplete. And a late flag again. I, You know, I, I don't... I don't care if you throw a flag, and I, I don't care if it's a 
If it's a foul, just throw it. Why does it take so long to get the flags thrown in the game? That's that's the only thing that irritates me. I mean, you see it happen. Pull it out and throw it. And I can understand if it gets stuck, but it's been all night long. Uh, they've come late. Again, not, you know, all right, their penalty's fine, but don't sit back and decide if it's a penalty. If it's a penalty, throw the flag. Another pass interference call that brings up a first down and goal from the 10-yard line. Save if Nicholson gets involved here. Not at the moment. They're going to throw for the end zone. And this is going to be caught. Or did he drop it? No, he does drop it at the very end of the play. So that uh, looked like it was a touchdown. Looks were certainly deceiving right there. It looks like it was corralled in. It just like going down. He couldn't just keep hold of it. And that was uh, Bettendorf again. The intended receiver. And Hoying, he does a good job. He just put the ball up there and, and let his guy and their guy go after it. Simple as that. My guy and your guy are going to battle and see who wins. There's a handoff. Nicholson is wrapped up immediately. Good job on that play. And just stepping up was Hubbard from that linebacker position to make that tackle. Yeah, third down and nine, I would expect a Hoying pass right here. He's been good all game. Hartley uh, should be expecting right here instead of the running game, expect the passing game. Let's see where they line up Nicholson on this. And they will keep him in the backfield. I wonder if they would consider a draw play here with as much as they've been throwing the ball. No, they are going to throw, and it's to the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. Bettendorf pulls it in. And so uh, Bishop Watterson now on the verge of tying this game. And that was a straight bullet right there from Hoying, finding his open wide receivers, and that unfazed senior leadership right there showing what they can do. And a good job to create the room that he needed to separate from the defender. Carson Blank. With a chance to tie it here with 10-13 to go. And Carson Blank has done just that. And so it is a 21-21 game with 10-13 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, let's give me a chance to tell you about Dr. Hutta and Price and their orthodontics practice. And they've been doing it for a long time. And not only that, um, orthodontics is not just for kids anymore. You think about braces, well... Dr. Hutta and Price, they work with a lot of adults as well as children. Uh, whatever need that you might have, they're going to be able to fill it for you. And to find out what services they have or to get a free consultation, all you have to do is log on to their website, which is simply lovethatsmile.net. Hutta and Price Orthodontics. Well, let's see where the Hawks stand right now. 21-21, 10-13 left here in the fourth quarter. Gino, here's a fact. If they had the same drive that they had to start the third quarter, they not only will take the lead, they'll win the game because they will run all the time off the clock. Now, Watterson does have three timeouts, but if they could have one of those sustaining drives with success and run the football, they could put it away here. Yeah, if you're Watterson, this is kind of not an ideal spot to be in. You kind of wish that it was a 21-21 to 21 game at, at before that, and it would be 21-14. to 14. Because Hartley's got those methodical runs that they just know how to burn time off the clock. And this is one of those main things that Hartley's looking to do right there. If you're Watterson, it's kind of not a great position to be in. That kick goes through the end zone. So the Hawks will start at the 20-yard line. Yeah, with 10 minutes left, it's, you know, sometimes presumptuous. I'm just saying if they do what they can do, what they are known for doing, and what they did do at the third quarter, you know, they could take uh, the momentum of this game back over. And they could dictate how it ends. But there is a long way to go between now and then. And I'm sure Watterson has uh, some different ideas. Now Johnson and Marcellus Parker in the backfield. Peyton Underwood ready to go to work. Turns and hands it off. And Parker takes it. And he'll get a couple. See, that, that right there is typical Hartley football, right? 
three yard run. Couple threes and a four, and all of a sudden you find yourself. Well, they they give him four on that one, and uh, you have the first down, and you just keep things going. Yeah, you can tell they're taking their time, getting the offense ready, situated, knowing what their next play is going to be, and just bringing as much time off the clock as possible. Saunders goes in the backfield, and they hand it off to Johnson, and Nile looked like he was going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage, and he bounced free, and looked like he might have a lot of room, and then the gap was closed again. Good job by the Watson defense stopping Nile Johnson right there knowing that they're trying to get to that, those long runs, and they're like, we're going to stop you in your tracks. So it is uh, third down and six. Here's a pitch to the near side. Trey Saunders cannot get away from the tackler. That's a great job by Tyler Young to come up and make that stop. Now, well, instead of the Hawks being able to do what they wanted to and control the clock, they're going to have to give the football back. And this is exactly what you don't want if you're Hartley. That was a quick de offensive possession that they have to give away. Warson's defense was tremendous, and they're in really good position right now. Ryan Hawk ready to punt it away. And Hawk does boot it. End over end. And this one will take a bit of a Hartley roll and get down to the 37-yard line. And that is where Watterson will start once again. Now they have the same opportunity I talked about with uh, Bishop Hartley just a few moments ago. But, Gino, to me, it's a little bit different. I don't think they're going to control the clock for eight minutes. But they could get down there and they could put another touchdown on the board. Yeah, I think they realize that they can take as much time as possible We've seen that they've been pretty quick offensive possessions for him, especially with the passing game. But now they're gonna they should try their as much as possible just to slow it down and just keep it in their control for as long as possible. Young comes in motion, Hoing with time. Has to scramble a little bit, trying to direct traffic, and he throws, and this ball is in the air and falls incomplete. Sean Saunders was on the coverage. Could see Hoying there just trying to motion his receiver as to where he wanted him to go. And he just couldn't get on the same page. Just over eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Second down and ten. Hoying, quick throw to the near sideline. Young, the intended receiver, and he had it knocked away. Richard Kenny was right there. Young got that ball in his hands, but could not hold on to it. Richard Kenny, a nice job in coverage. Yeah, great job by Kenny right there, poking the ball out of the wide receiver's hands. And now it's third and ten, and the clock stopped. Great position for the Hawks right now. Yes, indeed it is. If they can uh, stop this play, then they can get the football back and be in a similar position they were just a few moments ago. But it's going to take stopping a pass, one would think, although Nicholson is in the backfield. They could mix it up and try to create some room for him. Third down and 10, Hoying will throw it. Looks to step up, and he gets caught, and he is dropped. A huge sack for the Hartley Hawks just when they needed it. And it's the big man, Daniel Tucson coming up with a big play. Yeah, we just saw the star of the defensive line right there, getting the plays that matter the most. Fourth and 10 now, forcing Watterson to punt the ball. Big momentum boost for the Hawks right there, trying to get back to where they were a few minutes ago. So they have to punt. Kenny and Saunders are both deep for Hartley. Here is the kick, and Saunders calls for the fair catch at the 40, and that's where the Hawks are going to set up so there's what, maybe about a uh, little over a minute less on the clock. You're about at the same place that you were. <laughs> so but that was a nice job defending on the uh, three and out. 
Yeah, and I think it's a good position for the Hawks to be in, given the fact that their scoring drive was at 9 minutes, 7 minutes, 10 seconds now. Um, I think this is a good place for the Hawks to be in terms of time, that they can burn as much time off the clock as possible. But they're going to have to get first downs to do that, and they did not on their last possession. Underwood will pitch it back, taking his time, looking for a hole with Saunders there, and he doesn't find much. Picks up about three. Again, they will take that. Second down upcoming here. Hawks with a tight running formation. Got Nile Johnson now as a tailback. And they give him the ball. And here comes now up the middle as he cut back from the left side to the middle. And he gets the first down to the 47-yard line. And there's Nile Johnson again making big plays where it matters, getting those important first downs and just keep moving the chains for the Hawks. Down to 6.15 remaining. Peyton Underwood under center. Takes the ball, gives it back to Niall Johnson. And Johnson will get a few here. Ahead for three. Now and again, Geno's, we were just talking about this. This is it. This is what they want to be doing right here. Just get those runs, three yards, four yards, keep the clock turning. I mean, if worse came to worse, you've got a good field goal kicker. If you didn't have enough time to get all the way to the end zone, you could attempt a field goal for a win if you needed to. Yeah, I think what you also want to do is just force Warson to get those timeouts. So in case in the situation that they have the ball again, they can't use them. There's a handoff to Marcellus Parker. And Parker over the right side. He stays on his feet. And he breaks a tackle. He's inside the 30. Down to the 20. And inside the 15-yard line. Big run right there by Marcellus Parker. He's starting to show a little bit more of the running game now in the second half that we didn't talk about in the first half. And he's been showing he's being a difference maker right now. Now the Shea stepped out at the 17. That's where they'll place the ball. Yeah, nice job. Good contribution there by Marcellus Parker. Underwood with now Johnson behind him in the backfield. Going to hand it to uh, Trey Saunders, and Saunders trying to go with a quick hitter, and he does, and he picks up a couple of yards. Nice little counter play there. Johnson's run the ball so much, you almost feel that they're going to turn and give it to him, but uh, Saunders came up there very quickly and pounds ahead for three yards. Yeah, and Saunders one of those good running backs right there. There's a cycle in for Hartley. He can definitely make those big plays as we've seen so far in this game. Second down. Going to split a couple guys out to the left here. Kenny and Saunders. Underwood will pitch it quickly to now Johnson. He picks his way through the middle, and he just got tackled as he got inside the 10-yard line. Now that's a uh, very good tackle turned in by Jack Henry. Maybe saved a touchdown. Now third down and two. Underwood hands it to Johnson again. Up the middle he goes, and he's down to the five-yard line. That'll be good enough for the first down. And these types of runs are better. It's actually better that he's not breaking free because the clock just keeps running now for him, and it's, it's working in the Hawks' favor because with four minutes left, it's going to be a lot harder for Watterson with less time to get go back down the field. Now well, they bring in that jumbo package again in the backfield. We've got uh, Parker is in there, and also uh, Sherrod Bowens is in there. And they hand it off to Johnson, and he bounced left side, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Five-yard run by Niall Johnson. And the Hartley Hawks have retaken the lead with 3.39 to play. 
And it's only fitting right now that the big main running back of this game made the most important play so far offensively. Niall Johnson, he's been tremendous so far. Two touchdown runs, and he's made so many difference, differences in first down conversions. Ryan Hawk will try to add the extra point. Ryan Hawk puts it up and puts it through. And we have a 28-21 game in favor of the Hartley Hawks here as we are getting late in the fourth quarter of this game. Hey, make sure you stay tuned after the game for the player of the game. It's presented by Mojo Sports Gear. For all your custom apparel needs, give Mojo Sports Gear a call at 614-864-6656 or visit their website at mojosportsgear.com. Tell you what, Niall Johnson, he's got his mojo going on right now, doesn't he, Gino? Yeah, he's been great so far. Uh, you know, we obviously realize that the running back depth was different this year just compared to last year with the losses of Gian January and your Mason Sawyers and your Angelo Evans. So you're wondering who's going to come up and step up and be the next of those guys. And so far this game, Niall Johnson, he's been the guy. For Hartley right now. Yeah, and let's not forget about Marcellus Parker. Big run on that drive um, and some big contributions. Again, as the penalties have uh, calmed down, the play has gotten better. Imagine that. Yeah, Hartley was very much more disciplined so far in this drive. Not as many penalties. And the penalties that they commit, they kind of made up for it. You know, the penalty that cost them 15 yards, they went back and they scored. So, so far, they're making something out of their penalties. Jack Henry is deep. Ryan Hawk will put him back inside the five. Ball taken at the three. Up over the 10. 15. Gets to the far side of the field and is going to be dropped just shy of the 20-yard line. Well, three and a half minutes, three timeouts. That's plenty of time for Watterson to get down the field with this passing offense they've used tonight. So Jacob Hoying will be put to the test. And for Bishop Watterson, last week they lose in overtime to DeSales. They're right in this one, giving up a late touchdown. They're down by one score. They don't want to have the same fate as they had last week. They want to, they want to turn the tables this time around. But they'll need to score to try to even think about getting it to overtime as it stands right now. And we get a whistle and a delay of game. I am surprised they let that go on for so long and didn't just call a timeout to make sure that they're they're set. I, they want those timeouts for the drive. I get it. But we saw in that first uh, half they were taking first quarter. They took two timeouts to try to, and we talked about it at the time, to try to make sure that their team was set, that they knew what was going on, that they were going to be in good position to, to pick up the points that they were hoping to get early in the game. But they give up the five yards here. First down and 15. And they hand it off. And Nicholson looking for running room and finding some. As he gets back beyond the original line of scrimmage out to the, just about the 22. Bring up second down and eight. That was a nice run right there by Nicholson. It's a shame, though, that that, um, that delay of game right there really hurt him because instead of being a second and two, it's more of a second and eight now. See if he gets it again or if they go to the air. And they give it to Nicholson, and he's got room, and he's got the first down as he's all the way up to the 40-yard line. And we'll still power ahead to about the 42. Starting to see Nicholson now get those runs. Trying to set the tone, giving good position for Hoying to make probably a probable pass in this drive. Well, now the hurry-up offense by Watterson. As Hoying takes a snap, again he hands it off to Nicholson who bounces to the outside. And uh, he is going to be near the first down marker. Did his forward progress give him the first down? We'll see. No, he's going to be short by about a yard. Well, the uh, they've used the passing game to set up the running game, which they're using now. The Hawks trying to make a quick substitution. And they've got to take a timeout. And Brad Birchfield doesn't look uh, 
happy about it by any means. Timeout on the field with 2.12 remaining here. Yeah, you can tell right there there is a little bit of confusion in the substitutions. That really forced Coach Birchfield's hands to call a timeout. And it was uh, Victor Wheeler was the guy that was running on the field late there. And, you know, again, there's numerous things that go on. As it, it's not just on the players. The coaches are trying to yell and make the substitution sometimes. Even sometimes a coach, you know, you get into these uh, hurry-up offense situations and, and you're not quite where you need to be on making that switch or player doesn't hear you when you're yelling to him on the field. So a whole bunch of things factor in. Yeah, and I think that timeout doesn't really hurt him as much. If anything, it helps him. Two tw not, that doesn't really help him, honestly. But it doesn't hurt him at all. 2-12 left. Watterson has it. They want to keep the ball, so they don't want the, the clock to keep moving. Hartley does, so the timeout doesn't hurt him so much. Yeah, they just got to make sure they get it right. Because it is a short yardage play, and they don't get it right. <laughs> Again, you uh, take the timeout, and you make a mistake immediately out of the timeout. That hurts. That moves Warrison forward more, and that's what it was like in the first half. Let's see, going down the stretch, if they're able to take advantage now in this most important drive of the game. And again, they've got three timeouts. And they're in a situation where a field goal will do them no good. They've got to get to the end zone. Hoying hands it off. Nicholson spins off a tackle and up the middle he goes. And he's got the first down, and he's inside the 20 to the 18. Well, all night, we've talked about Cam Nicholson. And when's he going to be a factor? Did they go away from him? No, they didn't go away. They were saving him to the very end. And now they're utilizing him here. And we have an injury timeout on the field. As it's uh, one of the Hawks that is slow in getting up and getting to the sidelines. And that is uh, Deontay Hubbard, and he's been he's made some pretty important tackles in this game, but he's not in there right now, not for this play. So they start the clock here. Hoing takes the ball, hands it off, and this time the Hawks defense is there and ready. And I believe we'll have a timeout called by Watterson now. Under two minutes left. Huge stop right there by the Hawks. Oh, no, there's a penalty. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Huge stop right there by the Hawks. And the penalty right there really puts them in better position. If you're Watterson, you got to be cooking yourselves right now. It just mean that this is really going to hurt them. Yeah, that is a big mistake by Bishop Watterson. They haven't made many mistakes tonight. They certainly haven't made as many as Bishop Hartley has. But uh, this one they hope is not going to be costly. First down to 25, and Hoying looks to throw, and he's got a man, but he overthrows him. Incomplete. Boy, and he... He had him open over there, too. That's uh, Andrew Bettendorf. One thirty one left here. Hoing more than likely will look to throw it again. Fakes the handoff. Has time. Forced out of the pocket to the far sideline. Throws on the run to the end zone. And that is broken up. Great job to break that up in the end zone. And that was Trayvon Saunders. Great coverage right there by Saunders. Hoying had a great pass right there out of the pocket scrambling. But ultimately the Hawks defense shut it down and really prevented a huge play because that would have been first and goal really close to the end zone. Gino, it almost looked like he just sat back enough to let him catch the ball. And, and he, well, maybe it was that he knew he wasn't going to get to it in the air, so he knew he was going to have to strip it. Whatever the case, it's a great play. And it's now third down at 25. And Hoying, with five receivers, throws over the middle, and that is incomplete. And there is a flag. And that's going to mean a new set of downs. Oh, 
Going to call defensive holding here, I think. So a 10-yard penalty and a replay of third down. The 10 yards closer to the end zone. They still get two chances to the Eagles to put this ball in the end zone. Minute 18 to go in the fourth quarter. 28-21, Hartley with the lead. Hoying looking to the sidelines for the play once again. And he's got time, and he's going to use it. Nobody in the backfield. Hoying drops back, throws on the left side, and that ball is caught. And stepping out of bounds is Nicholson after making the catch. And here we go with a fourth down and five. Well, they didn't pick up the running back that time out of the backfield going up the far sideline. And Watterson, with this being the most important play, will take a timeout. They're probably going to hash things over. See, I imagine that they're going to go through the passing game. It's worked for them all night, especially in this area. Um, how much of yardage do you get? Do you just try to go for enough, or do you try to go for the end zone, go big or go home? So that's probably what Watterson's looking at right now and weighing their options. Well, don't forget, though, Nicholson has had some big runs on this. So uh, he just made a nice catch there and got them into this situation where it's fourth down. And, uh, yeah, it's the biggest play of the game right here. Bishop Hartley, they make this play. They stop this drive. They can run out the clock. Or they have a chance to run out the clock. Watterson still have those timeouts, so they'll run the ball and, and still stop the clock. And here we go. Hoying. And he's got Nicholson back there with him, just to his left. And we're now going to have a timeout called by Bishop Hartley. I think Brad Birchfield wanted to see the offensive look there and what Watterson was setting up to do. And now he calls a timeout and will attempt to counter. You can tell that both sides on the offensive and defensive, they're trying to make sure they know as much as they can. They don't want to make a mistake because, like you said, this is the most important play of, of the game. Hartley gets a stop. This is pretty much their game. But Watterson, they want to keep the chains moving and keep this game alive and potentially go back into overtime like they were last week. Yeah, and hey, don't forget, something as simple as an offside play here. You know, if, if you jump and you're offsides and they're going to get the five yards. So that's that's why this is so important. This is, you've got to play mistake-free right now. Defensively. And offensively, you must convert. You have no choice. Hoying looks to the sideline. Now he's looking over that defense, takes a snap, and he wants to throw, and he's got time. Now he's flushed, and he runs ahead, and he is still on his feet. He is wrapped up, and where is he brought down? It looks like a yard short. And Hartley is taking over on downs as they are able to make the stop. And that's something, Gino, we haven't seen all night. We haven't seen Hoying keep the football. That means he looked across the field, and he saw no options there and decided to try and go for it himself. Yeah, great job by coverage, coverage for Hartley, keeping those wide receivers for Larson in check, and also just forcing Hoying to do something that he hadn't really done all game in terms of rushing the football. And that ultimately led into a huge game and really in Hartley's favor for the rest of the way. So Peyton Underwood looks to uh, hand it off. And over the right side, it's not going to be much, if anything, there for Niall Johnson and... Watterson will take the first of their timeouts. It's only the gain of a yard. So they have one timeout left. They can only stop this clock one more time. So if you're Water Hartley, you're just looking for one first down because that's all you need for the one timeout, and they could keep this game on ice after that. Well, it's been a battle here between these two tonight, and each team has showed its strength at certain times. And for Bishop Hartley, a couple of big factors. The way they started the third quarter of this game and kept the ball for nine minutes. And uh, the interception that they turned into a touchdown was uh, absolutely huge. Yeah, and so far the biggest difference maker in terms of quarters has been the third quarter. Hartley outscored Watterson 14 to nothing. 
that's been a huge difference. Hartley basically just leapfrog Watterson for the lead, and they've been in control ever since now. So give Hartley a lot of credit for coming out of that second half, making the adjustments that they need to do, and ultimately being in the lead now with one minute to go in the game. Marcellus Parker and Niall Johnson in the backfield. And uh, either one of those guys would love to break one here. Just enough to get that first down. Handed it off. Handing it off to Nile Johnson. And he will bounce forward and be brought down at the 19-yard line. It's not a bad run. And that is Watterson's final timeout. So simple as this. Convert and win. A third down and three coming up for Bishop Hartley. 54 seconds left on that clock. As Brad Birchfield huddles with his team on the sideline. Again, a lot of the talk here is just be calm, <laughs> right? Just make the play. I think it's going to be interesting, too, to see who gets the football. Are they going to try and just muscle their way for at least three yards? Or are they going to try and, like, side stuff and try to go outside for the for the three yards, because it's going to depend. Are they going to go through their Marcellus Parkers or their Nile Johnsons? And I think that's going to be important right here. And what's your prediction? Because uh, I'll tell you right up front. I think Nile trying to dance his way up yeah, through it's the been, middle. Yeah, it's been working for him all game, and I think that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Like you said earlier, for Hart Watterson, it's going to be the same for Hartley. All right, let's see what they do. Third down and three. They do give it to Johnson, and Johnson gets into a pile and goes nowhere. But back to the line of scrimmage. But again, there's a 40-second play clock. Watterson cannot stop the clock here. And for uh, the Hartley Hawks, on their way to getting that uh, first win of the season and their first CCL game of the season. And they've got another big test coming up next week as they've got to go across town over to DeSales and play against the Stallions. Well, they're just going to let that clock run down as long as they possibly can here and then take the time out. So they stop the clock with 7.1 seconds remaining. And they can run a play and put it away here. So this is uh, this is going to go into the category of quality win, Gino. Yeah, Absolutely. Watterson, they fought fought their way. They played a great game, but obviously Hartley, they're they're the elite football team right here, and they're showing that what they've been showing last year is carrying over to this year. That they they can play anyone, and they're ready to win any game, and especially against a CCL school like Watterson, who's been very good tonight. So Peyton Underwood will bring his team back out. And run this last play. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. I'm sorry, I said Underwood would come out there. It's a fourth down play. It's going to be Ryan Hawk that comes out to punt the ball. And Watterson should sell out to try to block this. That would be their last chance. And Ryan Hawk gets it off. And this one bounces, stays on the far sideline, and stays inbounds, and that will end the game. The Harley Hawks victorious tonight here at home as they hold off and beat Bishop Watterson by the final score of 28 to 21. Coming up, we'll wrap this game up for you and give you uh, also our Mojo Player of the Game. As we continue from Jack Ryan Field where the Hawks win over Watterson 28-21, this is Hartley Hawks football. Chef Jimmy at the TAT, corner of James and Livingston, says, come on down. The TAT's delicious Italian-American specialties are so nice and nicer, and the Corovas are going above and beyond to keep their guests and employees safe. 
Try this dine-in special, pasta dinner for two, with soup, salad, bread, and dessert, just $29.95. Or this carry-out deal, family pasta dinner for four, with salad, pasta, meatballs, and bread for $27.99. Add a bottle of select wine, and you're out the door with a dinner for four for $35.99. With wine, the dining room's open and safe. But if you're not comfortable dining in, call ahead and order TAT Curbside Carryout. The TAT at the corner of James and Livingston, 614-236-1392, where the Corova family makes you feel welcome like nobody else. Good eating, good times with TAT. Bob Boyd Auto Family in Lancaster treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. You have high expectations and specific needs when buying a car. Bob Boyd enjoys the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow Bob Boyd Auto to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. They have an experienced sales staff eager to share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you. Browse the inventory from anywhere by going to BobBoyd.com. While you're there, schedule a test drive and check out financing options. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. Here at Bishop Hartley, the Hawks get their first win of the season as they defeat Watterson by the score of 28-21. Bob McElligot and Geno Hoffman with you. It's time now for our Mojo Sports Gear Player of the Game. Call Mojo at 614-864-6656 or find them online at mojosportsgear.com. And our Player of the Game, number 21 for the Hartley Hawks, Niall Johnson. What a big factor he was here tonight, Geno. Not just two touchdowns, but a lot of big runs and big yardage just when the Hawks needed it. Yeah, he... He was able to keep drives alive, gain those pivotal first downs, and also scoring those two touchdowns, scoring multiple touchdowns. The first touchdown game really set the tone for him, and the last touchdown game really made the difference overall in the seven-point game against a really good Watterson team. Um, he was able to use his footwork, dance out of trouble, and just overall did a great job as a running back today. Yeah, so big game for Niall Johnson, and he is our mojo player of the game here tonight with a couple of touchdowns and helping – Partly to this victory. Uh, next week, uh, the Hawks are going to go across town. They go to DeSales to take on the Stallions. Uh, Gino, there's you can't even talk about what a big rivalry that is because, you know, this is one where Watterson is – you know they're leaving here saying, doggone, that's a, a game we should have, could have had. Uh, DeSales next week is sitting there and looking uh, – well, they're in the midst of their own game right now. They're up 14-6 to over Mansfield in the third quarter. But they're going to be looking at this game and then saying, all right, how can we – play him that tough and find a way to get a win it will be the first road game of the year for the Hawks as well yeah and it's going to be a tough road game going to the sales um, first of two meetings this year especially so for a rivalry game you're getting two of it in the same season so that's interesting and we're going to see you know battle the running backs again Niall Johnson this year against Quintel Quinn for the sales who had a great game against Watterson the first time and I expect him to be ready against Hartley. Yeah, and I think that the Hawks' defense would welcome that. I, I think they would like to have a running game because, as we saw here tonight, uh, you get a team that can throw the football, you, you can expose them a little bit, especially early in the season with some young corners and some young uh, uh, secondary that really hasn't gotten all the reps that they would like to have at this point. Yeah, I think the passing game leaves the defense room for more mental error, especially those passing interferences like we saw today. And so I think for the Salos, who obviously they're going to go to Quinn a lot more, Hartley's going to be a lot more prepared for that. I think they're prepared for him like they were last year um, during the Halloween game. And so overall, if you're Hartley, I think you're a little bit more excited for the, for it just to be back at your old defensive playbook and not having to make adjustments like you did today. Yeah, and I see again, I like how you put it, the old Halloween game last year. It's not just the game this year. Uh, it, it's just the first of two, and I, I think that's exciting. Maybe I'll feel different when the game's over next Friday night, but I think it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I mean, a rivalry game like the sales in Hartley, it's always the biggest game of the year, and to get it as early as it is now is just – Incredibly interesting because it was the last game of the year last year. We know how big of an event it was on TV <laughs> and all, all that cool stuff. And so I think to see it this year, it's going to be interesting, especially in the second game, to see how they make adjustments from when their first meeting is, like we saw with the two-game schedules. And so overall, I think it's just going to be an exciting game, and I think both teams are really excited to play each other. Yeah, I'm sure that they will be uh, very excited to play each other. That is a no-brainer. So that is coming up next week. That'll be a 6 o'clock game over at DeSales. I'd like to thank uh, our partners tonight from the Ohio Media School, the Score on Air, and also Game Day Broadcasting uh, for helping us to, to bring this to you tonight, both on video, on YouTube, and on the audio channels as well. So uh, thanks for being there. It's a big win for Bishop Hartley. 28-21, they beat Watterson. For Geno Hoffman, I'm Bob McElligot saying thanks for listening to Hartley Hawks Football.
This has been Hartley Hawks Football. Tonight's game was brought to you by Bob Boyd Auto Family. Come experience the Bob Boyd difference. Huda and Price Orthodontics. Love that smile. And TAT, Columbus's oldest Italian restaurant. Tune in all season long for Hartley Hawks Football.